stuff in your lap and that chair broke, I'll never forget the look on your face. <laughs> oh, Lordy, what a town. I've never seen such a town. <laughs> I've never seen such women. <laughs> 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 Well, it must be a whale of a joke. Maybe I'd better order here. No, we were just remembering those girls the night before we left town. <laughs> that was a night. But now it's another day. This ain't Laredo. Back on the open trail. Ain't no dance halls, just scrub and dirt. Ain't no dance girls, just bees. None of them knowing a two-step. Yeah, well, we're just guessing it up a little. That is exactly the point. So let's get something straight right now. Every drive starts from scratch, and so does every drover. And I won't stand for no Billy Aiken. Either you two knuckle down to work, or so help me, I'll send you back to Laredo, and you can ride herd and all the dance hall cows you want. <laughs> Good boss, we a rocking chair job. Mm -hmm. Now, it usually takes a few days to break a herd of trail anyway. You still gotta watch them a little bit. Well, I'll tell you, Mr. Baver, been pushing cattle as long as I have. You get so you read the signs. Now, them cattle ain't gonna cut out on me. No? You suppose those are doing over there, going out to pick flowers? Holy smoke. Now, get out of that rocking chair and get them. That spells lace, don't it? That frilly stuff? Yeah, sure does. What's P A N T I E S? Panties? Say, what kind of trash are you reading there? Well, it ain't trash, Mr. Wishbone. Don't tell me. Any book that talks about lace panties isn't fit for decent people. But, much Mr. Less Wishbone. A young boy like you. Now, give me that. Now, you drive. It's your turn anyway. All right, Mr. Wishbone. It ain't what you're thinking. Never mind what I'm thinking. You just mind your own business. Mother Perkins' cookbook. That's what I'm trying to tell you, Mr. Wishbone. What's lace panties got to do in a cookbook? Well, it tells about serving lamb chops and chicken legs in a real fancy way. You cut out little pieces of paper and fill them and roll them around the bones so they look fancy-like. Like lace panties. Oh, horse feathers. Give me that. Wishbone, hold up. Oh! Right, which one is having another canteen? Hey, it's getting kind of late. I'd like to set up camp over in those cottonwoods, all right, by you? Nope. Until I tell you, keep rolling. Well, you better tell me pretty quick. I gotta get my fires going and supper cooked. I don't want to run any short order house. No cooking, just time for coffee and sandwiches. We'll push on ahead. All night? Yeah, it'll be a full moon. Country's easy up ahead. Won't have any trouble. Well, maybe not from the bees, but wait till the men hear about this. Oh, yeah. That's all I'll be waiting to hear. Oh, that's it, huh? The big prod. Build them or bust them. Well, now, the men ain't that much different from the cattle. They gotta be shaken down, trail broke, too. Now, you know these men better than that. Sure, the old hands. These new drovers gotta be sweated out. Gotta find out which ones can stand up and last all the way to Abilene. And in the meantime, we gotta sweat, too. Well, now, that won't gonna hurt you. You can afford to lose a little of that town fat. Lace pants. What do you expect me to do? Eat it for you? Be better off if you're dead. 
have something with? Yeah, a lot of things, but what in particular? If you slice this meat any thinner, I could write a letter on it. I suppose you got something real clever to say, too. Oh, shut up. I'm too tired for it. I'm too tired to even chew that stuff. I didn't ask for this garbage. I got a right to a decent feed. Isn't anybody getting any difference? I don't care about nobody else. I put in my time all day, and now I'm getting what's coming to me. You got it. Like the time I have. And no dog robbing, slop dealing cook's gonna put one on. Dog no robbing, slop dealing where you wish! Those were my orders. Just sandwiches. We got no time for a hot meal tonight. What do you mean there's no time? Just that. We're pushing on. As soon as you finish eating, get back to the herd. Now, you can't make me work all day and all night, too. I didn't sign on You to... signed on to take orders. If you can't take them, cut your horse out of the string and get out. I sure will. And I got two days' pay coming. You got sign-on money. You're lucky I'm letting you keep that. You dirt... <laughs> Anybody else object to the way I run the drive? I signed on with Haskell Favor, so I guess I better take him back to Laredo. Yeah. Well, if you finished eating, come on, quit standing around, get back to work. <laughs> Did you wish? Pack it in. All right, you heard him. I gotta say one thing. Maybe you don't build them up, but you sure bust them down. Yeah. That's what you were aiming to do, wasn't it? I suppose. Come on, Quest. <laughs> Look at old Quince. I bet he's glad it's about over. Over? What do you mean? Well, you're going to let up now, aren't you? You found out what you wanted to know. Uh, maybe find out some things I didn't want to know, too. We'll keep pushing till I get all the answers. Thought you'd like to know that Wiley and Jacobs took off last night. I'll be a few more today. I can manage. Not the way these bees are acting up, we can't. I wanted to cut back to home range. We'll be having this trouble. To well out of this territory. So we'll push them hard and keep pushing them until they're too tired to even want to turn back. Yeah, but the rate we're pushing them, we're going to wear out the men long before the bees. So I've noticed. Look, boss, I know this drive's important, but it takes time to shake town dust. We've been through this before. Only it's never shaped up like this before. Shaped up like what? <laughs> What's going on? It's all right. I've been expecting him. It's just a little wilder, a little dumber than I thought. But who are they? We need replacements, don't we? Hey, boss. Let's cut in behind them jaspers. Give them some crossfire. Never mind, Pete. Quint, you better get out to the herd and get the men on those bees. They're going to be a little spooky after this ruckus. Yeah, but never mind. Get going. <laughs> What's going on here? You know them or something? Now, Mr. Favor does. They're new drovers. Drovers? They come rushing up to a herd like that? Good morning. Hey, any of you fellows might be the trail boss of this herd, Mr. Favor? I'm Favor. Well, howdy, Jess Clayton. Now, Mr. Wilson down the radio sent a telegraph, said you'd be coming through here. You might be looking for some drovers. We always expect to lose a few hands when we first start out. Well, I sure hope you lost enough to take us on. If you're willing to stick all the way to Abilene, Put in a day's sweat for a day's pay. Well, now, Mr. Favor, this here is the sweatingest bunch of fellas you ever did see. Well, when we rode with Jeb Stewart, we put in twice as much saddle time as the whole troop combined. Cavalry's one thing, herding's another. How much experience you had? Oh, well, now, don't you worry none. We know what we're about. We'll find out soon enough. All right, standard pay, usual bonus if the market's good when we reach Abilene. That's fair enough. I'll sign your papers later. You can get to work right now. Well, now, I thank you, Mr. Favor. Oh, say, by the way, you, uh... You wouldn't be needing a ramrod. No, you wouldn't. 
A rowdy Yates, our ramrod. Nice to know you, Mr. Yates. Mr. Nolan, our scout. Mr. Nolan? Well, call it, Mr. Yates, where you be wanting us. Well, you two men can ride left flank. You three can ride drag. Drag? Well, now, Mr. Yates, we're not exactly tender feet. It's been a long time since we rode drag. Look, you'll ride where I tell you to ride. Well, all right, whatever you say. All right, fellas, light out. Like we're gonna have more trouble riding here than the new drovers and the bees. Maybe, but it's still good to have some new blood in this outfit. ready to join the rest of the corpses. Oh, yeah, they do look pretty bad, don't they? Yeah, you haven't been giving them any rest cure, you know. We were just taking a quick breather, Miss Baker. You guys feeling all right? Sure, sure. Oh, you can get a little rest tonight. Making pretty good time, heard shaking down nice. We'll pitch camp and get a few hours of rest tonight. Rest? What is that? I wouldn't know. in here like that. Howdy, Mr. Favor. Hi, Clayton. How we doing? You boys seem to know your job all right. Well, now, you just wait till we shake down a bit. We're going to get them beeves to Abilene before they know they left Texas. If this was the Army, I'd say he's bucking for sergeant. Yeah, maybe, but I'd say uh, you owe it to him and his boys for the rest you're getting tonight. Be rolling in a minute, Mr. Favor, just as soon as I wash down some of this dust. Oh, no hurry. You've earned yourself a rest. Uh, thank you. Yeah, I gotta hand it to you and your boys. Well, how's that? That way you buckle down to work. I'm willing to admit it. I didn't have too much hopes when you signed on. I figured you'd be in and outers and fold up as soon as going got rough. Boy, you've been putting out twice as much work as my men. You're only half as tired. Well, I guess it's all in what's eating at you, Mr. Faber. How you take Mr. Nolan and Mr. Yates? All the others, they're hard-working drovers, but it's their regular job, what they cut out to be. I guess they're just plain do it till they get tired. I take us, we can't afford to get tired. What do you mean? Well, we ain't got no place yet. Well, now, you see Frank over there in Loby? Now, their families own big spreads down here in Texas before the war. Matt, he was a foreman's boy on a ranch over near Fort Worth. Stacy, he already put some money down on a place all his own. Well, we all joined up together, rode the war out together. When we come back, there just wasn't nothing to come back to. So we all stuck together, decided to shuck it all and start all over. Doing what? Well, that's just it. We don't know exactly. We've done some trail herding, some wrangling, job here and there, whatever we can find. 
Sometimes together, sometimes separately, but until we settle on something, until we latch onto something, we just plain gotta be twice as good and work twice as hard as anybody else. That make any sense? Plenty. I wish you luck, all of you. Well, I thank you. Well, talking about work ain't getting it done. I'll see you later, Mr. Faber. Bottom of the pot, you want it? No, thanks. Yeah, don't blame you. Huh? You want to stay up and talk? Uh, I'll stay up and listen. Sure. You got something in your craw. I don't know the signs after all these years. How many years has it been with you? How many drives? I don't believe much in counting. It just makes you feel that much older. Yeah. Funny how the years can sneak up on a man without his realizing it. So one day it's just a little bit harder to climb up in that saddle. That bed ground he's been figuring on is just a little further off each time. Night camp ain't a place to have fun and chew the fat. It's another place to sleep so we can get through tomorrow. Yeah, well. Well, what can you do when, when a cow horse starts getting winded, turns heavy on his feet? Oh, we're talking about horses now. Every year a trail boss has to cull out his herd. And cut out the ones that aren't doing tough work anymore. Turn them back to pasture, ride and ranch. Ah, oh, then you are talking about the drovers. I've been ducking it for days. Now it's square in front of me. Showing up in this bush. Quince, Scarlet, Collins. I'm afraid they're getting too old for the work. Old? Why, there isn't any one of them that's more than... It isn't just years wish, it's spirit drive. They're just plodding along, forcing themselves. Well, of course they're forcing themselves. Who wouldn't? Take an idiot to like what you've been putting them through. And what happens when it really gets rough? Like it will. Droughts, floods, stampedes. Isn't anything they haven't been through before. Even yeah, when a man gets a little bit too much time on him, the hair slow and cutting, he ends up with a horn in his gut. Doesn't think as fast, slips in front of the herd. I'd be taking a chance on letting those men go out and kill themselves. Also, you'd rather do it slow and easy by turning them off to pasture. There's plenty of other jobs, easier. Man, there's no job for a drover but droving, you know that. Now, these are your men, boss. You've got to be loyal to them. I think I want it to be like this. When I started out, I was just shaking down the new men, not even thinking of the old hands. I never figured on anything like this. Anything like what? Getting tired of being pushed around? Now you listen to me. Maybe this outfit doesn't have all the muscles you want, but it's mighty well got all the brains you'll ever need. I don't care how fast this bunch of bronco stompers can move a herd. I'll bet on our men getting them there. Can't you understand? I'm bossing this outfit. What else can I do? Well, that's just it. You're the boss. You gotta do your own deciding. But while you're at it, if you think Quince or Scarlet or Collins or any of the rest of them are over the hill, what about me? Or even you? Don't forget it. We all take just about the same amount of time to get old. 
All right, boys, roll out. Time to take over the night guard. Yeah, let's go get him. Come on. You tell that Loby, he's hey, so always late. Quiet down now, fellas. These boys trying to get a little sleep. Yeah, they sure need it. <laughs> <laughs> All the hooting and wrestling. Man have to be deep to get any sleep in this camp. How's the coffee? It's empty. There ain't no coffee, Wishbone. And there isn't gonna be till I get ready to make some for breakfast. I've done all the cooking I mean to for the night. Cook's supposed to have coffee ready when the men want it. You show me the book says I gotta make you coffee just because you can't sleep. I've never been on a trail drive where they didn't have no coffee. You're on one now. Are you going to make some coffee? Are you going to make me? I just might. <laughs> you just might try getting back to your bedroll. Wishbone's not making any more coffee tonight. Well, he made some for the others. For the men who are working. You need some sleep, not some coffee. All you men, you have dead on your feet. If you try getting some rest instead of sitting around talking all night and drinking coffee, you might turn in a decent day's work tomorrow. It sure makes you wonder. Hey, hey, where are you heading to? I've had it. I've rode most of five years with Mr. Faber, and I've never seen him go so sour. Hold on, you can't quit the boss like that. You know he's got a reason for everything he does. I know that. I know about his shakedowns, too, but, well, this is something different. It's just like he's got it in for everybody. Except maybe them new drovers. Here, give me that. You just got to trust him. You've been riding for him long enough to know that? Well, if he's so happy with them Jaspers, why don't the rest of us just let him find out how he'll get along with them without us there to back him up? Look, Collins, you, you ain't thinking too straight. You know, being a boss of a trail driver is about the loneliest spot there is, and he can't be telling you and me what he's thinking about all the time. Well, nobody expects him to share his secrets, but... Quince, how much longer are we going to put up with this kind of thing? Just as long as he dishes it out. Now, look, we're, we're both sleeping. Let's bed down like the boss says. Who knows? You might dream up a cup of coffee if you... Try real hard, huh? You know something? I wouldn't blame Colin for pulling out. Yeah. Shake it up. You had some sleep last night. Yeah, well, just uh, enough to know how much I missed. Down some water in your face. Feel all right? Better? Give it. Anything wrong? Well, just shaking the cobwebs out in the spare room. You feel all right? Oh, I'm just a little tired, maybe. That's so, all. Yeah. Maybe you'd better take it easy. I'll have Clayton finish your trick. No, I'm all right, I tell you. You don't look it. Well, I ain't never chased any bees with my looks. He'll be all right as soon as he gets some decent rest. He gets as much rest as anybody else. If it ain't enough. Hey, where's Pete? I don't know. You said about the head, didn't you? That was over an hour ago. Should have been back unless he decided to stop for a rest, too. Well? I didn't see any sign of him. Preston heard? I wrote old man Preston, told him exactly where and when we'd be coming through, and he had to be here on time. I got a telegraph from him just before we left Laredo, promising to be here with his 200 head, ready and waiting. Said, you look around at all? Did you see if they were even close? Yeah, I looked around, but I figured I ought to come back and check with you. Well, it wouldn't have taken that much more time. I got to do all you thinking for you? The way I remembered, I'm not supposed to do anything. Just take orders. Good. Then go out and find that herd. Yeah, boss. Kind of rough on him, weren't you? He's tired. Oh, Pete's tired. Quince is tired. Everybody's tired. 
Maybe we ought to give up the cattle business and open up a rest home, huh? About 50 head. I'm waiting for the boys to haze them back. And give the rest of them a chance to break? Keep them rolling. Yeah, sure, boss. Wait a minute. How did it happen? Where'd they cut out? On the flank. Near where Quest is working. Blow them out! Oh, quit fiddling around, will you? Which one? I'm all right. How is he? Oh, nothing. Just a bump. Let's find those strays. Yeah, we got them all rounded up. No harm done. How did it happen again? Well, I ain't sure. I was just riding along. It was real quiet. Then all of a once, they just turned back on me. You must have seen them start to break. Oh, all of a sudden, they were just going. I tried to turn them, but uh, well, my horse hit a gopher hole and stumbling through me. Well, you're lucky those bees didn't walk all over you. Vince, did you fall asleep in the saddle? No, I never... Well, you're right, boss. I, I might have, for a minute or two. Mighty sorry about that. Here. Rowdy, you help me. What for? Well, just take this. Never mind what for. Take it and help me. Come on. Come on. Go on. Take this. Is that all you wanted? Now, you just stay here. I don't think Quince will want us over there right now. What are you talking about? Well, do I have to spell it out for you, or do you like seeing the execution? Well, hold on, Mr. Faber. You can't mean that. I'm afraid I mean it, Quince. Well, you mean one mistake. Did I get the sack after all the years I've been working for you? It's not just this one mistake. It's, it's, it's the others that can happen. The other one that can cost a lot more than just a bump on the head. Yeah, but that ain't about to happen again. Oh, Jim, we've all got to face it sometime. Some things we just can't do anymore. At least, not as well as we used to. Roving's a tough job, one of the toughest. Takes a hard man. A man who can take all the work that's thrown at him, come back begging for more. Just what are you trying to say, Mr. Paper? Well, you know, we all slope along, never thinking about it. One day, something like this jumps up and bites us. We realize we're running out of time. I'm afraid you're too old for the job, Jim. What do you mean, I'm too old? Just this kind of work. There's plenty of ranches that could use you. Make your ramrod, even. I'll write to some people. Don't please. bother, Mr. Favor. All right. All right. Uh, of course, we'll send you your full share once we get to Abilene. All the money I want is what's due me, and that's all I want. You're letting him go? Yeah, I'm letting him go. What for? After all the drives we've been on, he only made one mistake. Because I don't want to make another mistake that could hurt him or somebody else a lot more. Don't you make a mistake now. Here, here, now. Simmer down. There's no use arguing with him. You find the herd? Yeah, they're about 15 miles out on the other side of that ridge. It'll be a couple of days before we can get here. Two days? Well, according to your letter, you wasn't supposed to meet Mr. Preston until tomorrow. He's still late. He's only got his three boys helping him with the herd. If you'd send a crew out there, they can shake him up a little. Mr. Faber? Point just asked me to tell you we're almost up the creek. You want me to start the herd across, bet him down. Might as well bet him down. We're going to wait anyway. Oh, push him across. Look, you made a deal with him. You said you were going to take his herd north to Abilene. My deal with him was for him to be on time. I warned him I couldn't wait. Only one day, boss. We can help him. That old man's got every cent he's got tied up in that herd. If you don't take it, it's going to break him. I said I warned him. I told him he had to be here on time. One day ain't gonna make that much difference. I'll do the deciding. Get cracking. You've been deciding a lot lately, haven't you? What? Like deciding we don't eat or sleep and running us ragged. And firing Quince, too. Fire Quince? That's right. Oh, Mr. Favor, he's a big cattle owner now. He cares more about that herd than he does the men. All right, get on back to work. Work's all you can talk about, ain't it? Just because you own the big share of this herd, you don't want to associate with the rest of the drover. Now, that is enough. No, that's not enough. A man can only take so much, and you've been dishing it out double. Now, I say we bed down right here. You say? Yeah, I'm Ramrod, and I got that right. Well, you just lost that right, boy. 
Jess, you're taking over ramrod. Thank you kindly. Boss, listen. Look, let's get something straight right now. You either take orders for him or you cut out. Now, which it'll be? Come on, I want to know right now. Skull it. Wishbone. All right, big mouth. You're speaking up for everybody. What is it? You knew the answer when you busted me, trail boss. All right. Take those beads across the creek and keep them rolling. Yes, sir. Al and I might agree. And I don't want any more speeches. <laughs> Finally found an excuse to get rid of him. And a mighty poor one, too. What does that leave you, in or out? Well, I never let the herd in hot water yet. It looks to me like you're in over your head. If that's your way of saying you're sticking, quit gassing about it and get going. Kevin, we're taking it out of supplies. All right with you? There's no skin off my nose. Looks to me like you expect to eat kind of high off the hog. Well, I ain't the only one taking off. Well, that figures. Well, you're leaving Mr. Favor in real fine shape for the drive. Shut up, Wishbone. I don't feel in the mood for any of your lectures. I'm not going to waste any breath on lectures. I just think you ought to know the straight facts. Well, come on. What are they? Let's have them. Well, you're dead wrong about Mr. Favor pushing you because it's his herd. He's shaking you down extra hard because he's afraid some of you aren't up to it anymore. Like, some of you are getting too old for this kind of work. Too old? Me? Maybe it means me. Well, no, not you, but, well, that's why I let Quince go and, well, some of the others. That's the craziest thing I've ever heard of. Well, call her what you like. He was worried about you. Yeah, he's got a weird way of showing it. Well, what about you, Pete? Well, he seems to think her greenhorn can handle Rowdy's job. Tell him to get one to fill mine. It's up to you, I guess. So I wish. Mr. Wishbone, if, if they're too old, well, why aren't you? You ever hear of Methuselah, boy? That's me all over again. Uh, uh. Frank? Yes, Mr. Hill. Don't let him bunch up like that. Give him a little room to spread. Yeah, but Jess says to keep him enticed so they don't scatter and drift off. Maybe, but uh, at least they won't be hooking each other or crowding each other into something. Well, just I said spread them. Yes, sir, Mr. Gill. Hey! Don't run them in that! Busted his leg, I think. That's all right. What in the blazes were you doing? Well, they cut out. Me and Loby were just trying to haze him back to the herd. So you ran him over this kind of ground? You could have cut him back someplace else. Well, I'm sorry, Mr. Faber. I just didn't want to let him get away. Well, you might as well have. All right, shoot him and get the others back to the herd. Yes, sir. I'm very sorry. Yeah. Night guard's all set, Mr. Favor. Yeah. Of course, we're going to have to work double shifts till we get some more men. That shouldn't be too hard, though. The bees are all wore out. They shouldn't give us too much trouble. I said Panther does. Yeah, he's been carrying on like that for half an hour now. And the herd don't seem to mind too much. 
Oh, fool's beef, you never can tell about them. Sometimes they'll stand still for a thunderstorm, and then a sneeze will set them rolling. Yeah. Well, he ain't moved too much. He's standing pretty high up on that ridge. A good idea if we kept him up there. Have the night guard set a couple of fires between the herd and the ridge. Maybe that'll change his mind if he decides to come down. All right, whatever you say, Mr. Paver, I'll see that the men keep him away from the herd. Okay. What's your opinion of the supper? Aren't you hungry? I'm not hungry. Say, when the boys left, they... Hey, what they were going to do? Nope. Say where they were going. Nope. The radio, I suppose. I suppose. Annoying kind of fella, isn't he? Sure be nice if we had some old timers that knew how to handle him. Thanks, Wish. You're a big help. Anytime, Mr. Favor. Come around here, you varmint. I'll slice you into cutlets. Senor boss. Good out, Butcher. I'll take a turn around the herd. La Pantera. He is the restless one tonight. Yeah. La Pantera. It is a bad omen, senor. As long as it just stays an omen. Senor Faber, somebody shoot him. Stupid bullet can strike the herd. The herd! It is stampeding! Get out of the herd! Everybody out! I just couldn't hold him. Who fired that shot? Frank, I could have killed him. I'd be lucky if the herd doesn't. No! Don't turn him! Don't turn him! Let him run straight! Keep him headed straight! Point him north! Mr. Wishbone, I tried my best. I tried, but I guess it ain't good enough. That's all I can try for. I tried to tell Mr. Jessen a new minute. Mr. Favor didn't want his herd turn. And I couldn't catch him, and I couldn't make him hear me. Well, I guess with the thunder of the stampede, they didn't even hear Mr. Favor. Well, it isn't their fault. It isn't anybody's fault. Everybody did the best he could. You're heading them back to home ground. You'll never get them back now. Oh, well, we did our best, honest. I know, I know. But I'm afraid it. Uh... Take more than brawn to be a drover. Next time, sweat. Feel. You mean you're letting us go? Well, I'm, I'm afraid I can't use any drovers without a herd. Uh, nothing you can do. I'll let you have an extra week's pay and tide you over. Oh, no, Mr. Favor. Now, that's not fair. We don't want any pay at all. No, oh, you worked for it. Yeah, we lost your whole herd. Let's just leave it be. Whatever you say, Jeff. Well, good luck, Mr. Favor. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Coffee, 
it's cold. As soon as I hobble the horses, I'll make us some breakfast. Oh, no, thanks. I'm not hungry. So what are you going to do, just sit there and take root? Wishing isn't going to get that herd back. No, but I'm afraid nothing else will, neither. Oh, come on. It isn't that bad. We'll find a way to round them up again. I wish. Herd's gone. Everything else will. Finish. It's all over. Finished. What are you taking along for? Last I heard, Mr. Favor, this was a free and open country. A man could go anywhere he pleases. So I might ask you, what are you tagging along for? Mr. Wasteful and Mr. Favor. Whoa. It's the herd. You had them trail broke. They just plain stopped themselves. Well, maybe they're not all by themselves. I can see some men with them. I just hope our eyes aren't playing tricks on us and we're not just seeing what we want to see. Well, there's only one way to find out. I suppose Mr. Jess and the men got the herd to show Mr. Favor how sorry they were. Well, you know, I got to thinking. It wasn't really too nice of me to ride off and leave you in a hole like that. The least I could have done was wait till you got some new hands. Appreciate that. Sure could have used some more hands last night, especially with experience. Oh? Trouble? Oh, little. Say, those bees didn't all just bunch themselves up. Oh, no, you know how it is with drovers. They like to keep a herd nice and tidy. Drovers? Yeah, they didn't get very far. You know, age two, slow a man down. Well, Mr. Favor, I guess you thought we ran out on you. Yeah, well, I uh, did sort of need you at the time. Yeah, like we were a bunch of quitters. Look, uh, herd's back, you're back, nothing more needs to be said. Well, now, wait a minute. We figured out a dandy excuse you ought to at least let us tell you. Go on. Well, it's like this. Uh, Rowdy there, he's got a good set of brains under that bushy head of his. You give him 15, 20 years, he might even make trail boss. And, and the way Rowdy saw it, we wasn't much used to you around the herd. And the way Jess's boys were doing the work of three men. Yeah, well, well you figure the way they were going at it, they're bound to collapse. Well, it just doesn't really matter how young they were. Yeah, and once they fell flat on their face, the herd's bound to stampede. Now, we didn't quit. We did uh, what you call in the Army a strategic retreat. We just stayed back and waited in case the herd stampeded or in case they run the other way. And you wanted to be there to stop them? Beautiful. That's the most beautiful, flat-faced lie I've ever heard in my life. Well, thanks for letting us tell it. Yeah, it uh, made us feel better. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, Quince, uh, I didn't think you made a strategic retreat. I thought you was fired. Well, uh, that's true, Mr. Favor. Uh, I've been in jail, too, just as many times as I've been on a trail drive. But I guess you know me well enough by now that I ain't about to be locked up or be fired any too long. All right. That is, if you're not too old and feeble to make it back to the bed ground. I'll be able to meet you. <laughs> Pressing heard by morning, I better get started. Why don't you wait and let a few of us go with you? Well, I passed him up. I better get him. Come and get it! Come and get it! What we have, Rich? Yeah, Woo, look. 
the quail. Hey, look, turkeys. Where in the world did you get them, Wishbone? Yeah, wild ones. Winged them myself. Now, let's let an artist carve. What the heck is that? <clears throat> Wouldn't be proper to tell you, Rowdy. Tell me something, boss. Don't you ever get sick of this business? Oh, you bet. Oh, dang. Might as well be on the moods out here. Nothing but cattle. What's that? Wait a minute. What that is? Oh, I know what it sounds like. Sounds like chandeliers and pretty woman. It's a music box. I haven't heard one of those things since I was a kid. Thing. We heard the music. Who are you? Rovers, we got a herd about a mile back. We're just checking trail. Didn't mean to butt in on you. Come on. Oh, oh no, no, wait, wait. Please. I forget. I have nobody to apologize for now. Uh, I bark at strangers. My Frida, she would have offered cakes and tea. Like snow over a cannon, she softens me. And... Anton Spalin. Favor, Gil Favor, this is Roddy Yates. Good Scott. Yeah, if you. You like music, Gil Favor? Very much so. Minuet G, Beethoven, is one of Freda's favorites, so. Uh, <laughs> the player here is terrible, it's not. Well, where did you ever come across a music box way up in this part of the country? I made it. I make also clocks, watches, repairs, guns. I have been only two or three years in America from Zurich. Uh, we thought the business might be better in the West, but it, it does not matter. The grave. I hope it's not in the house of your herd. Oh, we'll keep a good mouth clear of it. You are going north. Sedalia, Missouri. So are we. <laughs> Peter feels it. Listen, please. I, I wonder if it might not be possible for us to ride together for a while. I could work. I would oil your guns, clean them. Well, we don't usually take any passengers, Mr. Wallen. Uh, certainly. <laughs> if you stay in. It's just I thought it. If I could keep myself busy for a day or two, it, it does not matter. Is that your only wagon? Sure. It's my only one. It, <laughs> I drove a little close to the stream. It, it's an excellent state of repair. Come, I show you. You see for yourself, huh? I have plenty of food. Gee, uh... Well, this might be a chance I can get that old Spencer rifle of mine repaired. Never has worked right. Natalie, there would be no charge. A couple of days, you say? Yeah. Well, we 
travel slow, but we travel steady. And if you don't mind eating a pound or two of dust. Donk. Donk. I'll go get our horses. Donk. It's not in so deep, here, but the horses cannot seem to. All right. You pull on my head when I holler. Yeah. All right, pull him out. Ha! 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 Pull him up. Pull him up. All right, try it again. Ha! You hurt? What's this loss? Uh, the wagon will clip my foot a little. Oh, I'm sorry, Herr Faber. Oh, I'm done. Good. You're all right. I'll live. Taking it to the herd, have them lined up behind Wishbone. Tell Quince to bear for the east. Keep clear of the grave. You gotta do. I'll scout from bed ground. All right. Forty! Ah! We are safe. We are safe. We are safe. Bring the horse, Franz. Come on, come on. Some uh, food, Mr. Uh, Suwala. Ah, donk. Hey, uh, making any headway here? Yeah, yeah, think so. How do you mean you think so? May I ask what you paid for this rifle? Oh well, I won it. Drew to inside straight. You lost. Oh, oh, I, uh, I only ended up with a couple of deuces anyway. I'll throw it away. No, 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 no. It's a challenge. Whatever you say. I never told you about that. Come on over here and sit down. What for? You look like no nurse to me. Come on and sit down before I knock you down. Oh, right. Worse than a little kid. Stubborn, mule-headed. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. You mean to tell me you've been going around all day on a foot like that? It's just a bruise. Oh, sure. Marshy! Yes, sir. Give me some warm water and that white shirt of mine. Tear it up and bring it over here. Well, yes, sir, Mr. Wishbone. What are you going to say when you want to wear it? Did you hear what I said? I'm on my way. I wish I think we ought to do is down send some cold water. Cold water, water nothing. What you do is take a hot rock, wrap it up flannel. Now go on it. about your business, both of you. Go on, all of you. Uh, what'd you do? Give up? Hmm? Oh, no. It's fixed. Fixed? Afraid I'm gonna have to open it up. Excuse me. This isn't right. When there is infection, cutting may make poison spread. You should give it time to gather first. Why is that so? You doctor along with everything else, Mr. Zwollen? Not exactly. 
I wanted one of my sons should attend medical school, so I studied with him. But this I know. You wait 24 hours. Mister, I've been doctoring this crew ever since it was formed. Your favor. Well, Wishbone's done pretty good by us so far, Mr. Swallow. You are wrong. Shooting. Look at this. Look at yeah, look at look what I do with this old Spencer rifle. I'm gonna go thank old Miss Whalen. Say, Mr. Zewalen, I've just been trying out this rifle and I sure want to thank you. Works better, yeah? Oh, it works like a million dollars. Uh, I just uh, want to know maybe if it wouldn't be too much bother you'd take a look at this gun of mine. Oh, no bother at all. Put it in the wagon. Also, the Spencer. Oh, no, the Spencer works great. It did not sound quite right. A little adjustment, perhaps. Put it in the back. Uh, what if you mind taking a look at this hole of mine while you're at it? Of course, of course. Put it in the back. Here. How are you feeling? Fine, thanks. By tomorrow, I'll be jumping around like spring flea. Ah, <laughs> good. In the old country, whenever any of the Swals was sick, we would play him a little music, take his mind from his troubles. I thought perhaps that you... All he need now is some sleep. It's mighty nice of Mr. Zwollen. I'd like that. This is by a man in Mozart. Supply wagon. I have a bonk. It's already. Please, you will help us here. Uh, Just a dad gum minute. Please, you will bring him to my wagon. Mr. Zuwayan, uh, I hope I haven't put you out of it. Out? Yeah. Uh, see, I sort of got around with the other men about how you fixed up that old Spencer rifle of mine. And, well, they were kind of wondering if you'd check over their guns, maybe. They'd be glad to pay for it. Pay? Yeah. How many guns are there? Oh, 20, 25, something like that. Ah, Peter, you will bring these guns. I will clean and adjust each one for Fimsic Finney. Huh? Fifty cents each. Oh, well, they charge a lot more than that town. If that's what you want, it's your... Good.
se joindre. Hi, boss. Well, Quince and Dawkins are holding me. Got a table for night herd. The guns ready? See, all righty. them out until morning. Why? Must not be stabbed. You're gonna be up for a while. I'll tell the night herder to take over for him to bring the guns in. Yeah, huh? Tells him. Kind of early, aren't you? Yeah. Who's the boss? So, boss, I do not know this word. You know, uh, mi uh, hair favor. Ah, so, <laughs> boss. To tell the truth, he is about the same. You said he'd be all right. I was hoping there would be no infection, but this morning when I changed the bandage about three. Bad, huh? Sure, it's bad. You know, I cannot help but feel it's my fault. Had not the two of you stopped to help me. Oh, uh, you, you can't think that way. Sure. It's very strange. I had known Herr Faber but a short time, yet I like him very much. He has intelligence and strength. Well, your guns are ready if you want them. Oh, yeah. Do I have them all? Uh, yeah. Good, yeah, yeah. good. You will come in tight, please. You will bring your guns to my two men. Where are you going, Mr. Russell? Nowhere, sir. Is Barry all right? Of course he's all right. Get up and make fires. Time's it? About sun up, boss. Hard. Yeah, rest needs it. That is what you should be doing. Riley. Yeah. You, you ought to be crossing Comanche territory. Next 20 miles. You stay clear of the villages. They want to trade. They want any cops. Yeah, well, you'll be taking care of that, boss. You come across something you just can't handle. You ask people. Otherwise, you make up your own mind. Don't let the men run you. They're sure going to try. Quit. Looks like we got some coffee. They sure are big fellows, aren't they? All my sons are big. Well, didn't hear you come up, Mr. Zuela. What's that you say about your son? I say all of my sons are big. Of course, these are the biggest, but they are the oldest. Guten Morgen, Papa. Morgen, Jungen. Franz, Willi, Sepp, nimm 50. Nicht mehr, nicht weniger. Ja. What'd you say to him? 
I told them take only 50 steers. What do you mean take 50 steers? That's all we need. Ernst, come. that is clear. I am sorry. As I told you, with mechanisms, I am very proficient. Yeah, especially guns, huh? It was necessary I should pile down the firing pins. We are but five to twenty. Bloodshed I do not want on either side. You don't want any bloodshed. You've got a real great sense of humor, Mr. Zuela. We're inside Comanche territory right now. We don't have any guns. A few days right east of here, a trading post is. There you will be able to buy weapons. We are ready, Papa. You think you have been made fools of. But I want you to understand that these beefs I have taken will keep 30 people from starving. Half our women and children. So. This little robbery I have committed to stop a lot of dying. Dying would have meant to you nothing. If you mean to look for the law, do not look. There is no law until Fort Buckner. Don't worry, we'll be back with our own law. Father. One minute. There is one thing more. Their favor must be brought back to health. Wishbone? You gotta let him get away with this. I've been up night and day so as I can hardly... Mr. Favor's bandage changed. Whalen wants his wag back. Oh, he does, does he? You heard me. All right, somebody come give me a hand. Please, wait. I think you must understand. If Herr Favor does not receive the proper treatment, he has about 12 hours to live. Yeah, I can't do no more for him. It is now necessary that the foot be properly lanced. A salve be drawn to draw the poison. It comes from Switzerland, this medicine. I have some by our place. It might work. Where's your place? From here, it's not far. And you're uh, offering us some of this salve? Unfortunately, there is no time to go there and come back again. I want you to allow I take Herr Favor with me. Wait a minute. You mean you want to keep Mr. Favor at your place? If he lives. If he dies, we will bury him. If he lives, he can join you when he is able. Take him. see Mr. Favor alive again. And what's the matter with you? Why didn't you pull that derringer? Because I don't send a derringer against two rifles, that's why. Pete and Scarlet right out to that trading post that Whalen was talking about. Pick up a few rifles. That'll hold us over till we can get to a gunsmith. Who made you trail boss? I did. You got any arguments? Oh.
Yeah? You have eyes, yes, sir. Puts him into black posture! Elms, how many heads did you weigh? Fifty. That is not so many. It's all we need. I'm not so certain. While you were away, we lost our last planets. First, the whole crop. Yeah, the whole crop. So? Well, we plant again. You could easily have taken more. Three of you. They are sick man as a wagon. Take me to my house. Maria! Easy. Be careful of his food. One of the drovers. Open the door, Maria. Make up for him a bed on the large bench in my workroom. Maria, are you listening to me? Papa. Sure. It was our last crop of potatoes. Forget the potatoes. You said that was what we'd make our money on when everything else was ruined. We will make it next year. How do we know there will be a next year? Anton, listen. Some of us have been talking. We, we are businessmen, salesmen, repairmen, but not farmers. You might as well ask a dog to sing as to expect us how dig in this ground. Maybe we should leave mud to the worms and frost and go where we belong. And where is that? San Francisco. <laughs> Without money. We could get the money. Yeah, from there. The same place you got the meat. Think how easy it would be for her. They have no guns. They cannot fight us. See, ten dollars a height, three thousand heights, thirty thousand dollars. I could cry for you. A man expects something from his eldest son. No one else thinks like my son. You said 3,000 still. At least. No guns. My father thought of that. It should be easy. Not should be, uncle. Bill. Good morning. I'm Maria, Svalin's daughter. Mm. Are you hungry? Mm. It's beef broth. Mm. How long? I brought you here four days ago. Mm. Why is here? My father's house. Well, who's been shaving me? I have. I also washed you and changed your bandages. Oh? Oh, I washed your hands and face, I mean. My brothers bathed you. Oh. Everybody thought you'd die, except me. I'd come in and watch you fighting, all tight up and mad. And then when Papa finally said you'd be all right, I was so proud of you. I leave this. If you want any more, you can help yourself. Maria. Your father didn't tell me he lived near here. No. Where's the herd? They've gone on. You're to catch up later. Maria, is your mother dead? Yes. It's strange she wouldn't be buried near her own home, that her children wouldn't come to her funeral. She is buried near her home, in Zurich. She died 15 years ago.
He had to get your attention, your sympathy. Why? Because his whole family was starving. He needed beef for the whole village. He only took 50 head. The, the men didn't object. He fixed their guns so they couldn't fire. What? You mean they're heading north without guns? I suppose so. Oh, no, no. Papa! No, please stop. No, please. Papa! Mm. 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 Get me the scissors. I'll take that spray. He's going to be all right. Maria, bitter. Americans. One day they are practically dying. The next, they jump out of bed like kangaroos. Mm. How does this feel? Like you put some needles in. Mm -hmm. And here? Same. Here? Same. <laughs> you heal very fast here, Eva. In another day or two, you will be able to walk. Of heaven, kind of a man are you, Zwollen? You got a decent home, nice family. You saved my life. No one I'm gonna try and even the score when I get up. And yet you steal my cattle. You send three men into Comanche territory without gun. What kind of a man are you? Hmm? Ever since I was a little boy. I wanted to be a farmer, so I saved. I argued, I organized, and finally become. <laughs> then I find out there is a little more to farm than putting the seed in the ground and giving the water. Oh. <laughs> but we will learn, I promise you. From now on, it will be different. And if it isn't? There'll always be somebody else to rob. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. This was the first time, the last. Regrettable. It's over and done this. Is it? What about my men? My herd? Hmm? You need not worry here, Favor. They will be all right, I promise you. The way I see it, we can either go straight up through this canyon or else we can bypass it to the east. What do you think, Wish? Don't ask me. You're the trail boss. Well, you got an opinion, ain't you? Nope. Why, you old coot? Well, that's what it means being the trail boss, young fella. Making decisions, taking responsibility. Now, I got a lot of sleep to catch up on, so don't bother me with your problems. Speak English? Comprende espanol? Quince? You know uh, sign language, yeah? Some. Just what old Pete showed me. Try and find out what they want. The rest of you, keep your hands close to your gun. What's he saying? Something about cattle. I think he wants to buy some. That don't mean a thing. Look at their eyes. They're just checking up on us. I tell him I'll sell some if he's willing to pay. If you're wasting our time to clear out. It's so strong, ain't it? Yeah. You tell him that. Get your derringer out. Come at you. 
Quinn's telling him to keep his hand off that gun. Bullet. I don't need any foot of them. They might be back. Yeah, but the things they're gone for now. Uh, Pete and Scarlett will be showing up any time. Let's eat, huh? And this makes six. Sorry I couldn't get them for you any sooner. Sure that's all you fellas need? Who's talking about what we need? Price you charge, this is all I can put it pay for. Well, a man's got to make a living. And I figure anybody that's willing to wait as long for something as you two did must need the product pretty bad. Listen, Fred. Come on, Pete. We got what we come after. Let's shove off. Yeah. Eat up. Pleasant journey, boys. Some do the running, not me. Oh, please be sensible. Listen. Maria, I... thanks for everything you've done. I've got to get back. Stop. Get back. France. What are you doing? He was trying to leave. They told me to keep him here. Who told you? Ernst, not a race. They're voting to decide about San Francisco. We'll salt the meat we need. I tell you again, the heights will bring us $30,000. Hands get down from there. It's over, Papa. It's all been decided. Zap! You're not slated now, Papa. No! Vote again, so that my father can see how wrong he is. All in favor? No! No! Billy! Billy! You listen to me. All of you, here, here is a guest in my house. I promise you this, the first man who lays a finger on him, I will kill. So help me, heaven. Well? I ask you the same question. Well? This is where I'm supposed to stay. All right. Suit yourself. But Ernst wants to talk to you if you want to go. They are going to butcher your herd. Your horse and back is the saddle in the shed. I'll need a gun. Ernst has to all. Could you fix the ones that you worked on for us, the ones belonged to us? The firing pins have to be replaced. That is no steel, that's not... Oh. There's steel in the music box. Is that all you need? Enough. Enough to kill my sons. Come. Please stay here. I know you can't, but I want to be with you so badly. 
But if you stayed, maybe I wouldn't want to be with you. I think I would. Maybe you wouldn't. Maria. I'll feed us in. Where is he? Where is who? Stop it, Maria. Where is he? You're all right, huh? What's been happening? Well, I, I sent Pete and Scarlett out to trading post to pick up some rifles. They ought to be any time now. Pick up three or four rifles, take them over to the chuck wagon. We'll fix a place for you to work there. He's the one who stripped our gun. Now we're going to fix him, if there is time. What are we worried about, the Comanches or him? My sons are coming, the rest of the herd, and they have guns that will fire. There's a canyon up ahead. I was going to bypass it to the east. Well, we could use our water backs. Let's move. Come up to it. Anywhere near it? That's just over that hill. Well, maybe we'll. What's that? What's what? Ooh. That's all the horses right there. Take a look in back. All right, who are you? U.S. Marshal. Yeah, this is the wagon. How many rifles? Six of them. All ours. What do you mean, all ours? U.S. government issue, friend. Stolen property. All right, turn them around. Oh, wait a minute, Marshal. We bought these rifles in good faith. A fellow named Kelly back to trade post. Huh. Kelly's been fencing stolen goods ever since he came out here. Claims you tried to sell him six rifles, he turned you down. Well, that's a lot. When were they stolen? Three weeks ago. Well, three weeks ago, we were with the herd. We're cattle rovers. You tell that the colonel of the fort ain't my problem. Now, wait a minute, Marshal. Friend, are you going to turn this wagon around, or am I going to turn it for you? Well, maybe you better do it. I told you, I can prove to you we didn't steal these rifles. Our camp's right over that hill. Still the first one? The fight. Quince took the first one. Quince? Where is he? Up there. Chester. Hey, look. Let me have your derringer. Please listen to me. I know my sons. They will threaten, but that's all. Shoot over their heads. I ain't got any more bullets anyway. We don't want to kill you! Come on out with your hands up. We let you all go on your way. Don't be foolish! We know you are unarmed. With them. You have repaired their guns. No more than one. I don't like this, Ernst. Maybe we better forget it. Then go on, get out. Any more cars here? Is this gun is way. No. It is my place to talk with them. Look, they've got to be stopped. Yeah, I know. Go home, boys. 
We don't want to hurt you, Baba. Please, get out of the way. I have fixed the guns. There was no time. They are 20 against you. You cannot win. Uh, I don't believe you. I better go see about Quince. Right. Forgive me, Ernst. We will raise you to do a thing like this, Papa. You are right. I was wrong. A man should not force his sons to follow his footsteps. Sons should their own footsteps make. You all right, Jim? Yeah, I'm all right. It just got me in the head. Yeah, well, that was lucky. Catch you anywhere else, you love. We're getting hurt. What's wrong, Marshal? Tell him why we were three weeks old, Mr. Favor. With the herd, about a hundred miles south of here. Why? We picked them up with some stolen rifles. They claimed they got them from a trader named Kelly. Said he had to buy them because all of theirs was wrecked. Yeah, I have found that. Well, who are you? And who is that? Well, that is my son. He was a bad boy, and I had to shoot him. I am Anton Swallow. I am very glad you are here. I wish to turn myself in. What for? Cattle rustling. Wait a minute. Well, you wait a minute. Cattle rustling. Yeah? We are just as guilty as he is. Thanks, My uncle is right. We are the real guilty ones. Now, who in the blazes are they? This, my brother is. And mine's son. The rest are my sons and my nephews. Are they cattle rustlers, too? Not yet. I am the only one that has actually the colossal. How about nine? I don't know. Stop fans. What the blazes is going on here? Well, it started a week ago. I missed most of it because I was out of my head with a fever. But Mr. Zwollin there, he, he saved my life. He took me into his own house. Well, I thought he said he was a cattle rustler. Yeah, he's Swiss. He's still having a little trouble with the language. He probably meant he was a cattle fancier. Please, Herr Favor, you do not have to help me. After all, I have a sick head of cat stole. Well, uh, no, Marshal, he didn't steal a fist sink head. Uh, 50 a head of cattle. Uh, he bought him. Here's the IOU. Please. Mr. Favor, only two of the tears are slaughtered. We could bring the rest back. You gotta have food. Uh, enough food we have. Go to San Francisco. San Francisco? Well, some. <laughs> Isn't you called Prime B Cowboy? That's well, what the government buyer called it. Why? You a judge of cattle? I know a sawny cow when I see one. 
Well, they've done pretty good, Mr. Cronies. They come 1,500 miles in their own power. And uh, ain't it your job just to count them and load them, Captain? What's the last of them? You take the tally, Cap. You resent my rank, do you? No, I just don't much like anything about you. You're still fighting the war, is that it? You Texans, you don't know when to quit, do you? Maybe not. If I had my way, we'd still be fighting. Well, you don't fight any better than you work. You're never going to get anywhere. Now get him in there! <laughs> Hurry up. I thought you were hurry to get to town. I've been going as fast as I can, Mr. Yeah. Okay. Come on, you're supposed to be ramrodding. Let's get a mullet. You've been riding me all day. What have I done? They ain't just done. They should have been locked two hours ago. Can I help it if these army men don't know how to cut and classify? They ain't supposed to be able to. All right, you were the ones that were hot. Get to a saloon. Looks like he's got a rattlesnake inside and gnawing away at his cuts. Only jokes on it. I mean, they could be glad to be at the end of the trail and all. Maybe he is. Maybe even more than the rest of us. My tally were too short. Not by ours. Maybe you missed them. Maybe not. I'm gonna argue about two steers. I'll pay you myself. Ah, never mind. I'll accept your count. Delivery taken. Thanks. That's it. Bermuda. Don't be staying here. Oh? Yep. You men who got personal horses, cut them out. The rest of you wrap your saddles in burlap. Put them in the wagon. Well, maybe I'll just keep mine. Maybe I'll only get in the saddle again. I think maybe I'll do the same. Take off and see the world. Whatever you like. I'm contracted to take a new herd through come spring. And if you show up, there'll be a place for you. Not me. I threw trail herd and had enough dust soaked up enough coal rain to last me a lifetime. Yep, me too. Never again. I may take the trail again. Not with you. Whatever you like. How about you, Roddy? Uh, I've had my fill. I think I'll try something else. When are you taking the train next to Philadelphia, boss? Ah, uh, tomorrow morning. Keep me here. Well, don't you want to stay over and relax? Get drunk? Oh, I got better things to do. Well, I understand you're being anxious to see your kids. Oh, yeah. Everything's all taken care of in town. Oh, there's plenty of room in the back of the wagon for everybody's gear. Good. Uh, while I was in there, I went to the post office. A letter for you from Philadelphia. Twice good. Read it to me, will you? It'd be personal. It's from your sister-in-law. Nothing you can't hear. Gil, dear, since I know it was not just to see the children that you were coming to Philadelphia, I am afraid I have some bad news. Yesterday, Millie Dutton got married. None of us had any idea that... Come on. Sorry. Nothing to be sorry about. the best remuda I ever wrangled, but... Oh, I don't know. I've had better strings. Oh, midnight, there, like riding a bag of rocks, the hardest trot I ever set. It was a good company on Nighthawk, though. Caboose. Didn't have all the speed in the world, but probably the best swimming horse I ever had. Saved my life crossing the reds. Yeah, you can kick them, you can cuss them, you can hate them like poison sometimes, but after all those weeks, it ain't easy to walk up and leave them. Well, what's everybody moping about? They're not your horses anyway. You got your horses. Let's go. Come on, everybody. We're going to town. 
Let a wagon go. Wish we're almost in town now. Yeah, we can almost walk to it from here. No, going to the town's gonna be done right. Charging in like the cavalry does. You can ride on by me, Wish. Come on. See that mushy? Ever seen anything like that? Looks like any other town. Well, any other town, that's Sedalia. Means the end of the line. No more riding back to the herd. No more nursing those stupid beasts. No more sleeping on the ground. Eating up your lap. From now on, it's gonna be bed and tables and tablecloths. Oh, that's right. Doesn't seem fitting just riding in. We all ought to get down and kiss the ground, probably. I'll do it for you. <laughs> Texas. They start acting like lawmen and spoiling our fun. We just up and ride them out of town. Well, it'll be the other way around here. Unless I decide to keep you for a spell in jail. Ah, you we tough, ain't you? Tough enough. What's the matter, Marshal? Does you want our business here? You're welcome as long as you behave yourselves. Like good little boys. Mister, we come here to celebrate. Sure. Just observe the laws. The first thing will be to take off those guns and check them at the hotel. Check our guns? Oh, no. Well, Mr. Faber? Oh, well. There ain't nothing we can't handle barehanded anyway. With one hand tied. Pardon me. The herd crew that just came to town. It looks like it. Just as long as the sight's pretty. <laughs> with dimples. I like them all with dimples. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> with dimples. <laughs> sure you get washed good behind the ears, boy. Don't want them dance hall girls to see how green you are. Oh, cut it out, Mr. Wishbone. Ain't likely to have any competition from you anyway. Whiskers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that soft? <laughs> wow! <laughs> hey, wait! <laughs> Get even with you. The last thing I do. Hey, Pete, get the bar. Pete. Hey, hey, come here. Come here. Come here. Come on. I give him a good. Come on, Jim Shave. So help me, I'll get you. Easy. Come on. Just one whisker, Mister. Just one whisker. Come on, he ain't Go on, get it. Keep it. Come on, Jim! Come back here! <laughs> That's the first time I've seen you look scary anyone like that, Fishbone. <laughs> it wasn't the look. It was this, and I'd have shot him, and you too. I wish we're just joshing you. Go ahead. Come on, let's go. Get your hat. Let's get out of here. All right. We have something to wipe this off with. I wonder what you'd look like with a shave. All right, you just hurry up. And if I know those Jaspers, we'll be in the first saloon. You tell them I'm coming? Well, where do we start? Let's start right here. Uh, I've watched those mothers. 
Hey, look. Flying. Nigh on to it, I guess. Permanent? Well, not unless that saloon keeper sold him poison liquor. You know he drank $10 worth in 20 minutes. I thought it's something funny he was so willing to let everybody go ahead of him in the bathhouse. Yeah, well, he looks like he could use cold one right now. It's providing he's still alive. Well, his feet still tracks. Clear the door and I'll point him. She'll take care of him in there. This way. No, wait a minute. There's a better one down this way. I ain't going anywhere till I get dressed up. Get some clean clothes somewhere. I'll go over and pick out some. Right. Where's Bone? Take care of this for me, will you? What's that? Your poke? All except fifty dollars. I figure that's enough to have a good time on. I want to wake up in the morning, have the rid of it. I got a place to go and things to do. Might go back east and see the sights. Well, what do you want to give it to me for? Why don't you give it to Mr. Favor or the bank? How you know I'll wake up in the morning and have it? Well, I trust you more than I trust me. Well, I'm not sure I do. Yeah, but you ain't going to get drunk or gamble it away or maybe get rolled up by some no-account dance hall queen or nothing. I ain't. Well, then what am I here for? <laughs> How do you like the shirt, eh? Oh, ain't quite my taste, but mine's good on you, Hazel. See, si, see, si. I, I think I buy it. Por favor, how much is this? Too much. Okay, si. More than you could pay. I, what do you mean, senor? I mean this store ain't for the likes of you. Uh, just what's the matter with the likes of him? I think you're making a mistake, mister. Or maybe you don't see so good. Oh, now, just a minute, and I can serve whoever I want to. And we've got a right to trade wherever we want to. Well, well, wait. It was just a mistake. That kind of mistake can be fatal. You've been lucky so far. Come on, Jesus. There's another store down the block. Mr. Favor, you want to come along with us? We'll have a little celebration. Oh, thanks. Well, it might cheer you up. What makes you think I need cheering? Come on. Come on, Wishbone. We decided we needed a drink. Might have known you wouldn't get past the first saloon. What's the matter? Wouldn't he come with you? Oh, who cares if he comes with us? The way he's acting, he'd just ruin the party anyway. You ever think maybe he's got troubles you don't know about? What troubles? He's just got a disposition of 10 miles of bad trail, that's all. Oh, pardon me. Uh, yes, ma'am. Allow me, ma'am. Anything I can do you for, ma'am? Why, thank you. I just wondered if one of you gentlemen might tell me where I could find Annie Coulter. But what's that? Or? Oh, nothing. I mean, uh, uh, did you say Johnny Coulter? That's right. He was with your trail herd, wasn't he? He wrote and told me he'd be. Yes, ma'am. He was. Well, so you mean, you mean he's not here now? Uh, did something happen? Did he have to stop off somewhere? Yes, ma'am. Uh, he had to stop off, all right. He had a little accident. An accident? But what kind of an accident? Well, you see, ma'am. Well, he, he drowned crossing a little river down in the nations. It was just a little river, but it was flooded pretty high that day. Pardon me, ma'am, but what was Johnny Coulter to you? I was to meet him here. We were going to be married. Oh, uh, miss? Well, now, ain't that a fine catfish? Poor kid. 
Guess she's all by herself now. Probably broke, too. I don't know. She don't look too poor to me. Not even too broke up. What'd you expect her to do? Go blurring all over the place? Uh, she looks like one that could take care of herself. Besides, what was she doing mixed up with Johnny Cook? He wasn't a prize. Well, that's true. I ain't even sure that was his real name. Well, have a gal like that in love with him. He must have had something. Well, if she loved him. Anyway, it isn't any affair of ours. Besides, are we gonna let it spoil our party? No, let's no. have a drink. Come on, let's go. Sure was a pretty girl. Well, where is he? He's dead. Drowned in the creek. Do you really expect me to believe that? It's true. I sort of figured you'd try to pull something like this. You still love him, is that it? Or, uh, or maybe you just want the whole reward for yourself. I tell you, he's dead. Uh -huh. Oh, not yet. But he's one to be. Upside down. Please. Steady now. Thank you, gentlemen. That will be a humdinger, I assure you. Come back tomorrow and I'll have the copies for you then. Oh, that'll set the art of photography back a hundred years. Well, it's a good thing you weren't at Wishbone. They'd never be able to see anything behind that bush anyway. Come on, Collins, wake up. You done got yourself. What's work? That's that word. Immortalized. Yeah, in tin type. John, get him out of there. We have the customers to serve. Oh, you. Thank you, you shoving Yankee. Please, if you're finished. I seen you somewhere before. You was with the Federals at Pittsburgh land. I'm afraid not. Well, I was. I was with Johnston. And if you hadn't have killed him, we'd have won the war right there. Maybe so, sir. Maybe so. What kind of an answer is that? What do you think we'd prove by fighting it all over again here? I mean, uh, Come on, just, Come on. Just one. Collins. Darn Yankee! Collins, you make me sick. The war's over. Can't get that through your head. You are probably a Yankee spy. Yeah, like Quince and Robbie. You're in a nest of vipers. Come on, I'll buy you a drink. That's just what he needs. Who is it? Remember me? Frost? Yeah, I met you at the Cattlemen's Association a few days ago. Oh, yeah, the trail boss came out of the herd just ahead of mine. That's right. A couple of weeks. You still around? Well, I had a reason. That's, uh, that's what I'd like to talk to you about. Oh, okay. come on. Uh, sit down. Thank you. Drink? No, no, it's a little early for me. I guess your troubles are about over. Good money. Others can't sell their herd at any price. So did you? Yeah, sold before the panic hit. We were both lucky. Is that what you come to talk about? Well, partly. No, I was thinking, uh, aren't you a little sick of trail driving? <laughs> you know, it's a rough, hard life. You can't make very much at it. Well, nobody's forcing you. You know, I, I've driven my last herd. I'm talking about you. Go on. I'm giving you a chance to get out of it for good. Cash in your luck. Oh. Going in business with me. 
partners. What kind of business? Wintering, fattening, cattle raising. There's no limit. Where? Lease land up near Aglala. Well, not to buy. Now, that's a good place. I've had my eye for a long time. Now I got the stake there. But I need it. You know, with a partner, that would ensure success. How much? We each put up 10,000. You should have that much when you cash your part of the profits. Then? Then we can buy plenty of cattle cheap. It's up and down the line. They don't have to be the best this way. Winter up, fatten, wait for prices to go back up. Then sell next summer at fat profits. Then reinvest in stock cattle coming up trail. Raise them. Pyramid. Become a rancher, huh? Yeah. Well, you know yourself that as soon as there's enough stock growing up here near the railroad, there'd be no Texas drives. Maybe that won't be for a number of years. Now's the time to make the job. Now, with the panic, drive prices so low. And you and I are among the few with the cash to use. Contract to bring another herd to come spring. Well, cancel it. Forget it. That won't break your heart, will it? This is a chance in a lifetime. I don't know. Well, I'm going to make the jump whether you come in or not. You know, together, we can make it big. Let me think about it for a while. How long? Uh, I'll talk to you tomorrow. You know, uh, money's not better than liquor for helping a man forget his troubles. For man or beast, that's what's the matter with it. He's right. It's terrible. What kind of cook he got back there anyway? Can you do any better? No, oh, but he can. He's right. The best cook this side of the border. I should hope I could cook better than that. He's right. Go ahead and show him. Go on, Mr. Moore. Show him. Just a minute, please. Out of my way, frog face. Now you can't go in that kitchen. I have two of the best cooks. You know you ought to be putting bail for serving food like that. Yeah, that's right. What do you mean? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. Uh, you yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Now, mister, you're going to find out what real cooking is. Well, I got work to do. No, 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 you ain't going to have a place. College fixed me a straight bourbon. Straight bourbon. Come on. Take a pint, a quart, and mix it. Mm. I understand you lost that trail herd came in down today, Faber. That's right. You had a man riding with one by the name of Colder. Johnny Colder. What about him? I'm looking for him. You a friend of his? No, no friend. And what do you want with him? I've got a reason. You also got a long ride down to the nations in a shallow grave by unnamed creek. Is that right? That he is right. If you ain't a friend of his, what did you want him for? I think he know. Would I be asking? Oh, yeah. It was something about Johnny. I so figured he was on the dodge. You figured good? Unless somebody told you. A lady, maybe? Lady? Don't tell me he hasn't got to you yet. Your story's fit too well. What are you talking about? A bounty reward for Colder Dead or Alive. It's a nice one. I guess you figured to split it with you instead of me. Well, I do admire her choice. You know, it ain't a very nice thing, seeing as you were going to marry him. She? Who, who is she? Are you trying to tell me you never heard of her? Laura Carter? I never heard of her. 
favor. I don't believe you. Look, mister, you don't scare a bit. Now get out of here and don't come back. Well, no, you don't scare me either. I just want you to understand I don't buy your story. I'm going to find Cole. You're not going to stop me, you or Laura Carter. You're welcome. You get a nice long ride. You know, sooner or later, Cole is going to come to me. Or rather, he'll, uh, he'll come to Laura. Good day, Mr. Fable. <laughs> That's what we drink down in Texas. But a drink is down. But I want to drink is down. Nice. That's right. That's the way we drink it down in Texas. Do you like Texas? I don't know. To me, you don't like Texas? Well, I've never been there. You gonna say you like Texas? No, I should. Look, I don't see what you're doing here in... Scotland, and I'll just have to call the mark. Yeah, you bet. Fast! <laughs> Hi, boy. What you drinking, honey? Water. Water? You don't drink. <laughs> well, now, isn't that real cute? Would you care to dance, Sonny? Oh, you don't dance either. No. But, but I do. You do? Well, come on! Like this, you'll probably the fortune too. Yes, sir. Uh, wishbones eater. Uh, the uh, short wagon beanery. Cafe wishbone, that's what it'll be. Wishbone, we gotta do something for it. For who? For that poor girl, John Colder's widow. She ain't a widow at all. Well, she's practically a widow. Anyway, she's destitute and broke, probably, and I'm gonna take up a collection for her. Not for me, you won't. What's the matter with you? Don't you want to help a girl out as broken as a yeah, but she's probably headed for a life of big forgetting. Oh, well, she's probably there already. <laughs> Mr. Baber, your men are beginning to little out of hand. Here it is still early in the evening. Uh, we're getting lots already. So? Well, I thought maybe you'd like to do something about it before I have to. It ain't none of my affair. But if we pick Look, them up... not working for me anymore. I can't give them orders. I thought maybe you might still have some influence with them. And maybe some feelings for them. Well, the way they're going, they might wake up tomorrow broken in jail or worse. Look, the grown men, they got to look out for themselves. I can only ask for me. You should say, Marshal. Drunk, disorderly. They're singing, they're dancing, they're fighting. As long as they don't break any laws. Well, they threw a bottle at me. But they didn't hit you. Miss Laura Carter? Yes. My name's Favor. I was in charge of the herd John Calder was with. Oh, yes, Mr. Favor. 
Won't you come in? Thank you. Please sit down. Well, I'll only be a minute. I'm sorry I don't have anything to offer you. I understand you were going to marry Johnny. Yes. Well, uh, you'd better have these then. Some personal effects, and some letters, and a ring. And he had some, some money coming to you. You'd better have. No, I couldn't take that. Why not? I just couldn't. Well, uh, you, you might need it. Oh, Mr. Favor, could you tell me? Uh, how... It was just one of those things happened on a drive. We were crossing a creek. It was running full and fast. And his horse slipped. Johnny couldn't swim. No. Say, you. Uh, Johnny Calder wasn't his real name, was it? Wasn't it? Well, it doesn't matter to me, but it seems there's somebody it does matter to. A man named Calvert. Why is that? Probably a bounty on Johnny's head. Do you know about that? No. And do you know it for sure? No, it's just a guess. Anyway, it doesn't matter now. He's already dead. Yeah, but uh, Miss Calvert doesn't believe that, and he, he might cause you some trouble. There's not much he can do to me. You sure you'll be all right or then, alone? I'm used to being alone. I'm not sure I wouldn't have been alone, even if Johnny had lived. You mean you weren't going to marry John? I hadn't made up my mind. You don't seem to miss him too much. No, not much. Are you craving for someone? Why did you ask that? Oh, something about your eyes. Perhaps you're just a lonely kind, like me. I'm not grieving for anything. Are you going to be in town long? Just a night. Have you got supper yet? Yes. But anyway, I don't feel like going out tonight. Well, Mr. Favor. I thought you'd never heard of Laura Carter. You never disappoint me, do you? I gather you understand why I figure Colt is going to come here. I told you, you're wasting your time. It's no time to waste. What poor little girl now? You know, John Calder's widow. Her widow would have been a, a widow to be. Oh, no thanks. Roy, a big one. Sure, boss. Now you're talking. You're going to join the party, huh? Yippee. <laughs> Can I work for you in a new restaurant, Mr. Wishbone? We'll see, boy. We'll see. Wishbone's giving me my poke. Ah! My money. Give him the money. You told me it was. Makes no never mind. Give me. Are you gambling again? That three-card Marty, that confidence game. Make I sure will not give it back to you. Never mind. 
You got it. Look, there's a girl from Good Falls, New York, and it's a sender. I don't care what her name or her pedigree is. I'm gonna do like I promised. Now, look here, you little buzz. Oh, that's my money. You told me to keep it. I never did. You took my money, and you stole money. You won't give it back. Mr. Wishbone never did no such thing. Who are you calling her? Oh, you, you liar. Why, Why you leave him <laughs> Right over there, John. I just took up a little collection for you, that's all. So that you would go into a life. Hello, Johnny. No, it's not fun. Get out of the way. Ah! Hey, you all right, boy. I warned you. You're under arrest. Wait a minute, why should you... You're making a mistake. She can tell you how this all happened. Well? Come on, tell him. Come on, little girl. Look, Marshall, you... You see if the ladies are right? Yes, Marshall. You're making a big mistake here. Come over here, we can talk to you. It's time these cowards were taught a lesson. Once and for all. If we put up with enough of their barbarities, they went too far this time. Robbing, murdering innocent people, molesting innocent women. I show them you can't come here and tear up our town. Do as they please. What do you think? I think it looks bad for us. Might just be bad for all of us. Maybe we best all get out of town. Get out of town? Well, I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. What? I'm gonna go back to the hotel, strap on my gun, then figure a way to get Roddy out of this. Any of you wanna leave town, that's up to you. What do we do, Mr. Nolan? Marshal? I want to see him. I thought you only answered for yourself. You can let me in, Ranger. prevented all this. 
minute you get loose, you get in trouble. I don't need your advice at this point. What happened? I don't know. One minute I'm, I'm standing there and I'm, I'm handing her the money, and the next minute she's got a gun on me. And some big fella comes to the door shooting at me, and I'm shooting at him. That's all I know. Did he say anything? No, he didn't. Well, he called me Johnny. What did she do? Well, then she started grappling with him, saying something like, uh, no, it ain't him or something like that. And then, uh, then he flattened her, and that's when the shooting started. She didn't say anything when the sheriff came up. Huh? I don't think she just stood there and looked. Boy, when are you ever gonna learn that just because a woman got an angelic face don't mean she's an angel? I told you I don't need any of your advice. Well, you need somebody's. I'm not gonna be needing anything anymore. Well, you're not alone. I guess I could use some advice myself. Yeah, since I ain't been no much better than you lately. Yeah, you sure ain't. But then I guess you get your own troubles. Yeah, if wants me to try money, maybe that'll work. Money? Wants me to give up some miserable trail driving. Try ranching up north here. Make a pile. Well, that ain't for you. Is it? Do you think I ain't bright enough to do anything else? I didn't say that. It's just that... You're a pretty good bill boss, and that means something. You just said I ain't been doing too well. Well, that's right. Every man's got a right to moods, and I guess you had a reason. What do you, what'd you decide on? I ain't made up my mind. Well, where are we gonna go, huh? Back to the hotel. Yeah, well, what about me in here? Well, sure can't bust you out of here. Well, what about those people out there? That's Marshall's problem. Thanks for the visit. Friday out of there, of course. Against that mob? We whip them. Oh, sure. With one hand tied? Get a gun, let's go. And show them Yankees. Didn't you get enough of that war boy? Mr. Faber, that's Robbie in there. Uh, no, I was just with him. And you're not gonna lift a finger to help him? You want my advice? Unless you can think up something useful and you'd all best just lay low. And I was feeling sorry for you, trying to defend you, thinking that. It wasn't that at all. You're just plain no good. You finished? Not by a long shot. Now, maybe you do have problems. Maybe everything isn't all sunshine and good grass. There's no reason to turn sour. Some of us got problems, but we're not gonna let a friend down. Well, I can't stop you. If you want to get Rowdy to more trouble, he's already in. I thought you weren't going out to me. I changed my mind. Too much excitement. Yeah, I heard there was a shooting. Albert, by one of your men. If that's why you're here, That's well... why I'm here. Well, you can't force me. I can force you to walk a lynching. No, please. Everybody ready? They'll be waiting for us. Yeah, there's nothing to do but go up there and face. Wish Mr. Fair was here. We don't need him. Come on. Here they come. Get ready.
Oh, no. Hold it up. Wait for me. Marshal. Yes. I want to tell you all about it. All right, steady now. Steady. Nobody move a muscle while I count. Now. One. Two. Three. Four. All right, thank you, gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, that was immortal. Sure is a fine idea, Mr. Favor. This most likely the shaggiest looking food that ever set the floor. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Mr. Favor, we all going to get a copy of that? Sure. In case anybody wants to remember this drive. Well, makes us all stop and think. Maybe some of us won't need to go back to San Antonio. There's some we've seen the last time. There might not be any San Antonio, is that right, boy? Fort St. Louis! Point East! What? Look, you see a man named Frost. You tell him I'm sorry I couldn't wait to talk to him, but the answer is no. I'm a fool, but I'll probably die on the trail. Oh, the meeting will be at the railroad depot at Chicken Leather Siding in four weeks. Will I see you then? Oh, uh, yeah, if I get caught up in some jail. <laughs> or unless he gets caught by some other girl. Self-control. That's the secret. Good luck in Philadelphia. Thanks. Bye. Bye, boss. Bye. Bye. Seems kind of strange, doesn't it? What? I don't know. A few months ago, no one knew each other. Now we're all sort of going our separate ways. Well, there's something about the trail crew. There isn't a rougher kind of life. But it's a mighty fine life. You think we'll see them all together again? Well, let's not go burying anybody. We haven't finished our...
Just what besides girls are those? Ballet dancers. Well, I see ballet dancers, the Turkish Delight Saloon in San Antonio. Ballet, not belly. Longer skirts and shorter legs. Yeah, big thing in Europe. Very popular. Well, I'm just going to be very popular in Texas, too. Uh -huh. Please follow me. You you weren't here from the beginning, were you? I know. Oh, well, I cannot permit that. A ballet must always be seen from the beginning. I'm sorry, we no one was being performed out here. Oh, I'm McKay. And Gil Favor, this is Rowdy Yates, my Ramrod. Ramrod? What's that? I mean, second in command. Yeah. I'm thrilled to have heard that's coming through this way. I indeed. Oh, I'm impressed. Won't you sit down? It's wine. French wine. The only thing to drink when you're seeing a beautiful ballet performance. You say, Mr. McKay. Yes, lad. This is a strange place to be holding ballet. Oh, nonsense. There are times when McKay has to go to Europe to get a ballet. There are other times when the ballet has to be brought to McKay. <laughs> Maestro. Si, senor. And now you see ballet as it should be seen. From beginning, please. And now, the 20 ounces of gold, as promised. Am I correct? You are a very generous, senor. My mountains are very generous to me. Ladies, you were marvelous. You were a delight to the eye and the heart. And I'd like to give you a little present. Here, there's one for you. One for you. One for you. What's he giving him, Rox? I'll give you nice long odds or nuggets. One for you. Gold? And you carry it around like that? Oh, where would he get it? You heard him say those mounds of his had been very generous to him. And here's one for you. Now run along. Younger men are waiting all over the world. You mustn't keep them waiting. Oh, uh, Mr. McKay. Oh, yes. Uh, you don't have to thank me for the performance. I was happy to share my pleasure with you. Um... Trail boss, you see. That's right. Where's she heard? About six hours right south of here. Why aren't you with it? 
And we have to ride into Endicott in the morning. Endicott? <laughs> I know the town. It's a dusty eyesore on the bosom of the prairie. Keep away from it. There isn't a girl to be found within its dirty confines. Well, we may not have to go there now we've run into you. We just want to get some information there about the dead mountains. What would you be seeking in the dead mountains? Water and a pass for the cattle. Plains are dry as bone. Maybe you could tell us about that. You said you owned the mountain. I do. What did you want to know? Is there a way for the cattle to get through? There is indeed. And water? Enough to flourish, yes, sir. Well, that's good news. Could you let us know the best way in? I take you there myself. Goodbye, Mr. McKay. Oh, Mr. Mr. McKay. Listen. Where are your horses? Oh, we got them right across the hole there. We were going to make night camp. Huh? They come. Go and get your horses and meet me here. Fine. <laughs> Funny old Jeff, isn't he? Yeah, it was a lucky drink running onto him like that. Like a little desert rat to waste the rest. Having them burrows and all. Mm. Well, the way he's throwing the gold around, he's one who found what he was looking for. Take off as soon as we turned our backs. Yeah, but he was going to take us out of the mountains. Uh, except that must be the one thing in the world he's most afraid of. Well, we ain't after any gold. You don't know that. Well, what do we do now? Well, we'll wait some days, right up to those dead mountains, see if we can find a pass ourselves. Far so good. Of course, we haven't gone far yet. Uh. Hold it. We're gonna try making a run for it. Well, this child ain't about to try and outrun bullets. Where's he going for help? They don't need any more help as far as I'm concerned. Why do you come to Dead Mountains? We look for water and a pass for our cattle. There is a pass. There is water. But they are both sacred to the Indians. You 
Ragnarok comes far. No farther. We've got 3,000 head of cattle. They have to have water. If your people need cattle, maybe we could trade. No white man comes to dead mountains. White man, you're letting him go in the canyon. No white man rides to dead mountains. What are you talking about? He's riding right in there. I see no. Let's be children or something. You're free to go back where you came from. But a guns and horses. Okay. Tribal customs. Maybe it's only the past that's sacred. This pass and all passes. Well, maybe it's only this part of the range. Every mountain in this range, every rock, every tree, every blade of grass is sacred to us and to our ancestors. You know, I might believe that if it wouldn't. Uh, never mind. We wish no harm. No blood has been drawn. We do not return. Because if you do, there will be harm, and blood will be drawn. Shut up. Permanent. Mr. Endicott ain't no town. It's just the leftovers. You're in business? Uh, I'm just too lazy to move anyplace else. Besides, there was a time when Endicott was pretty flourishing. Lots of people had high hopes. What happened to it? Hopes need nourishing. The only reason old man Endicott started the town was he was sure there was gold in the dead mountains. Ain't there? Lots of men went into the mountains looking for it. Only one of them ever come back. Old man McKay. Ever hear of him? Yeah, we heard of him. Every day, every week, gunmen, fortin' hunters come trailing into town, all looking for old man McKay's gold. All of them packing guns, willing and anxious to use them. Uh, What's your interest in the Dead Mountains? You looking gold, too? No, not gold water. We got 3,000 head of cattle on the Sedalia Trail. Why would you want to take cattle into them mountains? Well, there ain't any water on the place for 30 miles, that's why. If I was moving 3,000 head of cattle, I sure wouldn't want to take them to country I didn't know nothing about. That's why we're in Endicott, for some information about them. Information won't do you no good. What you need's a guide. You need somebody who knows the mountains as well as he knows his way from that front door over to the bar. That anybody in mind? Yes, I have. How'd you like to earn some money? short of money, I'm running short of whiskey. Uh -huh. 
First I heard of that. My customers don't pay what they owe me. I can't afford to buy any new stuff. I think you ought to do what I say. Come on. This is uh, Joel Turner. Howdy. Joe Faber, Ron Yates. Uh, I was born and raised in this part of Texas. I could take you blindfold. Andy Nook or Corner. Could you get 3,000 head of cattle through the dead mountains? Sure. What about Indians? There are not many in the hills. They stopped us. Oh? Where'd you come up from? South. They must have tried Echo Pass. But a lot of others. Much better suited for driving cattle through. Fine. Jeb Juice for the asking. I'm your man. Good. You ready to start? As soon as I get my gear. Hold oh, right here. Excuse me. Are you going into the dead mountains? We sure are. Uh, that's right, miss. My name is Barbara Frayer, and I came to Endicott yesterday on the stage. How do you do, ma'am? Your favor, Roddy Yates. How do you do? Please take me with you. Now, I know that sounds strange, but my father's in there somewhere, and I've got to find him. We're taking a herd of cattle through. We wouldn't have time to be looking for anyone. But I just want to go along with you. I won't be any bother, really. I've hired a horse, and once we're in the mountains, you wouldn't have to worry about me. I'd like to help you, miss, but uh, there's just no place for you on a cattle drive. But I came all the way from the east, and I'll just do anything to find him. Boss, maybe we could go. <laughs> no, I mean, there's nothing we could do for you, ma'am. I'm sorry, Miss Frazier. Yeah, I'm sorry, too. Ma I ain't one to argue, but then you know, why are you going to? Well, yeah. well, she said she's just looking for her long lost father. That's her story. Huh? You Roddy, know, I'm beginning to believe that the population of these United States are trying to find a way into the dead mountains to find McKay's gold. Oh, but that isn't the case with her. I mean, she's just here after father. You heard her say that. Like I said, that's her story. I don't know how you could displease such a sweet-looking little girl as that. No oh, practice. I hope I didn't keep you waiting too long. The important thing is you're getting us where we want to go to. I'll show you a way to get your herd through the mountains. Don't stay that white all the way in. The gun gets pretty rough for quite a while before we get to water. It seems like it always does. Turn 
meteorite stripped the sight of a mountain isn't the smartest thing in the world to do. I didn't think it would be. What do you have in mind? Going into those mountains alone? I am going into these mountains. My father's in there, and I'm going to find him. Say, your father's name wouldn't be McKay by any chance, would it? McKay? Of course not. It's Frazier. Look, we're, we're going on in there. We can't we just go on by ourselves. Why can't we take your woods? Thank you. Well, looks like my mind's been made up for you. Oh, well, but boy, Look! You know, if I had a choice, I'd send you back to Endicott right now, with him. You think you managed to sit your horse? Like you planned. Yeah, well, let's go. We wouldn't want to get lost. You know, traveling hasn't been too bad so far. We're past the worst part of it. I think we ought to be able to get our herd through here, don't you? Yeah, sure. I guess so. Well, come morning, Mr. Haber, we've got three or four more hours to ride before we get to water. Not fine. Probably just a coyote or something. It was just a mountain lion. Somebody who scares easy sure getting some strange faces. Oh, I, I just felt like being alone. I felt like remembering my father, the way it was the last time I saw him. He was very tall, almost as tall as you are, and very gentle. He was educated in Edinburgh and was teaching in Boston. He was a geologist and a mining engineer. Everyone said he had a brilliant career ahead of him. What happened? Well, he took me on an excursion one day. Left my mother alone in the cabin. And the lamp overturned and the cabin burned down. He started drinking very heavily after her death. I guess he felt guilty about leaving her alone. And then he gave up his teaching job and sent me to live with an aunt and uncle. And then he just disappeared. He went west. There were a few letters at first, but then none at all. What makes you think he's in Texas? Well, I got a letter from him two months ago. You mean he told you to come out here alone like this? Oh, no. He just wanted to know if I was happy, if everything was all right. But Andy, he mentioned the dead mountains, and I found out where they are. Here I am. Did uh, he say what he was doing in the dead mountains? Well, he said that a man who had befriended him was using his training and knowledge. Sounds like it could be McKay. He didn't say. He could use his experience as a geologist, help him find the ore, and then his mining engineer to help him get out. Mr. Favor, you just got to help me find him. Look, I've, I've got to get a hurt through. You took me with you, and you didn't have to. Yeah, I know. Are you sorry for me? Let's say I made a mistake. 
Why are you so afraid of being human? The only thing I'm afraid of is not getting a job done that I'm paid to do. Perhaps I could pay you, too. I've already been hired. So I guess we'd better get back camp. Turbulent crossing, and the waves of the Atlantic Ocean were rising mountains high. While our little ship was being tossed about, like a like a leaf on a waterfall. But did McKay get scared? Did McKay tremble? He most certainly did. <laughs> <laughs> and after riding many miles in an iron horse, here I am. Home at last. And now I'm going to tell you something you really want to know. On the way back here, I stopped in at your village. And you'll be glad to learn everything's going along fine. I've had some clothes shipped out from east. They put 200 more acres under cultivation. It'll be about a week before your replacements come in. And then you can go back to your village. Mr. McKay? Yes, lad. When you were in our village, did you see my wife? Ah, I did indeed. What's more, I saw your son. A son? I'm glad. Uh, of course you are. You want to laugh and dance and sing, don't you? Uh, even Rachel is a beautiful baby. There are white men camping in mountains tonight. There wasn't a fallen in. No one's ever been able to do that. It is two drovers and others. Another man and woman. Also two riders who remain apart. I don't like the sound of it. We'll have to do something about it, Lance, won't we? Danny, we haven't got all day. Should be ready to move out the instant they do. Oh, worry, we'll be ready. Ready for what? You men are a long ways from Endicott, aren't you? So are you. There ain't a bar in sight. I'm not leading it to McKay's goal. Of course she ain't. You're just showing the trail, boss. Uh, Pass through the mountains. That's right. So why worry about us? I'm not worried about you. I've got my story all ready. I found you following me. You tried to jump me. And I had to kill the pair of you. I don't think that's a very good idea. Do you, Jen? I sure don't. That's too bad. <laughs> Back. Get it. I'll go in ahead. You cover me. What if they're Indians? I don't know what it is yet. It'd be just Turner getting breakfast. Who 
was a pretty good shot. Three holes, not an inch apart. Whoever it was couldn't have gone very far. They might as well be on the other side of the moon. It'll only take them a few seconds to disappear in this. So it'll only take a few seconds for someone to get lost, you mean? This doesn't seem real. No, oh, it's real enough, all right. What do we do now? We get out of these mountains fast as we can, if we can. Tracking on this rocky ground ain't gonna be no joy. Sun might be some help. We knew which way Turner took us, but we don't. Well, sitting around ain't gonna change things. Let's go. I'm trying. Come on, Nada. What do you mean, keep on trying? We can do that forever. Oh, no. I forgot. You don't have any more water. How long is it before you die of thirst? You're not gonna die of thirst. Well, what am I gonna die of? Look, we got in here, so there must be a way out. We'll find it. The same way those other people did. The ones who came in here and never came out. Look, I don't know or care about them. Well, I do. I know what happened. The same thing that's going to happen to us. They just kept going round and round the way we've been doing. Every rock looked like every other rock, and they kept saying they'd find a way out, and they never did. Hey, boss. Sure. He'll know a way out here. What will that do us? It'll do us a lot of good if we can keep him in sight. Come on, Honda. to lead us into a trap. You don't have to. We're already in one. Easy, Jim. There ain't any more where that come from. All I did was make me thirsty. 
I'm getting sick of these rocks. Maybe you better start to love them. They're likely to be the last thing you'll ever see. We only hadn't lost them drovers. They're likely in the same spot as we are. What are we supposed to do? Stand around here and die? It's been done. Harry. What's he hanging around for? Whispering for he can't hear you. I don't want him to go away. Well, why? That ain't. I got me an Indian. Now that makes my day. <laughs> Think smart. That's all I was gonna say. I have done it, Seth. Fine. And now let's take a look at what flows down to us from the Benelant Mountain, huh? I think these were pebbles. <laughs> but we know better than we're allowed. <laughs> and there's no end to the golden mountains. At least, not yet. We still keep following? Yeah, he could have led us deeper into him if he'd wanted to. But he's found a quicker way to get rid of us. Yeah, let's keep following. That could be a mistake, boss. Yeah, but what's one more? Yeah. Each and every one of you. You came up here to seek for gold. I came up here looking for water and for grazing land. There's plenty of water and grazing land in the mountains. But not in the direction you're going. We hired guides. Where is he? He was killed by your people. You're wrong. He was killed by that man and his partner. But he deserved it. He was leading it to green pastures. We hired him in good faith. Faith means, um, it's a matter of belief, is it not? Why should I believe you? Either you do or you don't. That's a matter of faith for you to decide. You wouldn't be the first to come out to these mountains and never be heard of again. Our drovers will be here looking for us. And what chance would they have of hiding this place? What do you think we're so interested in your gold for anyway? We got 3,000 head cattle on our hands. Uh, I thought you say that, but I've never seen it. And this girl, why is she with you? She's looking for father. Oh. What's your name? Barbara Frazier. Was your father one of the men that came up to look for McKay's gold? Story she told us. He's a geologist and a mining engineer. His wife died, he drank up everything back east, so he came west. 
Last place he has heard from was the Dead Mountains. And who did the hearing? Got a letter from him. Letter? Interesting. Where did your father get his education? Edinburgh. Oh, the girl's clever. She knows everything about the man she's talking of. Everything except one thing. And what's that? He didn't have a daughter. He's lying. Mr. Haver, I sincerely beg your pardon. I believe it's tortured being a mother, but I'm afraid you've been misled by a pair of pretty eyes, among other things. You see, I'm the man she's talking about. <laughs> Careful. Now get down there, all of you. There are other brave about, you know. I'll be back. You two get out here! Out here. Tyree, is this what we come out here for? If we're lucky, there'll be enough to get us back east. That ain't all the gold is. You said there was more than a man could carry. There is. He's got it stashed someplace. Now, where do you keep the gold? We don't keep it. We spend it. You saw me kill once, and I'll kill again. I don't mind, Kilp. Matter of fact, you might say I like it. Now, gold never did a dead man any good. So why don't you tell us where you've hidden it? And you might live to mine more. Well, uh, I'm a reasonable man. And there's a good deal of sense what you say. But we have no feet of the hill. We manage to keep them out, usually. So all we have to do with the gold is throw it under the sluices. Maybe he's lying. Yeah. You go down and get the gold. As you wish. I suppose you're not all the gold there is. That's right. All of it. Same McGee. Yes? Uh, you'll be needing a hand, won't you? Hey! The gold's awful heavy. Come along. Is unconscious, isn't he? Thank you, you man. You'd better take him into the sheriff at any cost. I think you'd better take her too. I don't think they'll hang her like they will him. But it'll be some time before she gets to look for a father that never was, and the gold that was never hers. We'll take her in. And when you return, my Indians will show you the finest pass through the mountains and the finest grazing lands. Don't worry. <laughs> you won't be anywhere near this place. <laughs> Should ought to be with that one. This kind of thing go all the time. <laughs> no, but it ought to. <laughs> Your men would enjoy a can can more than the valet, Mr. Beaver. Uh, they, they appreciate it all right, all right. They, uh, one thing bothers me, Mr. McKay. What may that be? These stories about men going into the dead mountains and disappearing forever. There must be 
some truth. Yes. Possibly some of them got lost. Others may have died of thirst or starvation. While others... The Indians are very loyal, Mr. Haver. in the saddle and for what? I ain't even seen a stray, much less any sign. You heard what the man said, Jim. We hunt for strays, and so that's what we're doing. Yeah, you round them up and you line them out and you push them from sun up to sundown. What do you get out of it? Nothing. You start all over again. Well, I'll tell you, Rowdy, this is my last drive. When we hit Denver, I'm gonna take my share and buy me a saloon. Uh, Jim? You bet. I'm gonna prop my boots up on that bar and just rear back in the shade. Psst. Jim. You bet you. The rest of my life. Uh, Jim? What? <clears throat> Hey, no range bull. What is it? Well, I'll tell you what. Uh, you find out while I get out of here. I'll smile at him, Jim. Don't let him think we're nervous. Yeah, just call me old nonchalant. Nonchalant. <laughs>
Really, Carusti's our most tractable creature. Carusti? Must be the yellow scarf you're wearing. He can't abide the color. Well, I hope that neither of you are injured. Uh, no, uh, not where it shows, any. Nonchalant. I'm Kathleen Dundee. Oh, Roddy Yates. Oh, Miss Dundee. Uh, oh, Jim Quince, ma'am. Uh, we're with the cattle drive, heading for Denver. Ooh, cow drivers. Very interesting. Heading for Denver? Uh, yes, ma'am. Oh. Well, you, you must forgive me bad manners, but uh, I was just sitting down having myself a cup of tea. Of course, you'll be joining me. Tea? Uh, well, no, ma'am, we have to go catch our horses. Everything in its own time, as Robbie Burns was wont to say. I'm sure that your animals are wonder back to you both. Come along. The kettle's on. If we don't go, Carn... whatever his name is, might not approve. Yeah. Nothing like tea, especially when it's properly brewed. I once tried to get used to your national beverage. Coffee? Mm-hmm. I'm afraid that it couldn't get used to me. Mm. Oh, do sit down. Yeah. The Puget's kin card, my great-grandsire on my father's side. Oh, and the Havlin's 1821, my mother's. So do be careful with it. Are either of you gentlemen familiar with Coli Sibba? Oh, uh, well, I, I knew a cow ever down in the red. He, he used to have a feral layout. You remember him? <laughs> no. The Sibber I'm referring to was an 18th century English playwright. Uh, good, nevertheless. Oh, uh, no, that wouldn't be him. Tea, thou soft, thou sober sage, and venerable liquid. <laughs> Quite appropriate, don't you think so? Yes. Um, say, ma'am, uh, I don't mean to be nosy, but uh, where are the rest of your people? People? Yeah. What people? Well, you're not out here all alone. <laughs> no, quite. Monmouth, McKeith, McDuff, and I believe that uh, you're familiar with Carnoustie. Yes, ma'am, we met him. Oh, do sit down. They're quite harmless, really. I've practically raised them since their infancy. <laughs> they go along with the things in my wagon. They're all part of my dowry. Well, I, I thought you, you was fixing to open up some kind of a swap shop. Dundee heirlooms, a swap shop? Hardly, Mr. Quince. Uh, Miss Dundee. Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen, uh, you mean to tell me you're out here 70 miles from nowhere with just a wagon load of... Heirlooms. A heirlooms. And, uh... Four breeding bulls looking for a husband? Not a husband, Mr. Yates. A husband to be. You see, I was betrothed in Edinburgh at the livestock fair a year ago. Richard Whiting was his name, a fine strapping man, a pioneer rancher of the great American Southwest, or so he said. Oh. If only I could have seen the villainy behind that great smile and the twinkling eyes. Lies. Lies. All of it lies. The great ranch he talked about. Nothing but a mud shack. And the beautiful herd. Scraggy, underfed beasts. Oh, not fit to tread the pastures with Macduff. And that wasn't all, either. It wasn't me he wanted to walk beside. It was my wealth. Oh, content he was to shut me away in the kitchen with my fancy heirlooms while he flitted away my inheritance like snowflakes in a bathtub. Why, a man like that, he ain't worth being killed. So it's back to Scotland I'm going. Me and my bulls and my dowry. What's left of it? You see, I ran short of supplies and I lost my way. Oh, this country's like a crazy quilt. It's full of capricious canyons and deceitful creeks. Ah, but now that I've found you, everything's all right. It is? Well, oh, we're all driving to Denver. We can all drive together. Uh, 
Miss Dundee. But Kathleen. Uh, Kathleen, uh, you see, uh, you don't realize that we got a herd of 3,000 beeves, see? Oh, that doesn't bother me at all. Well, ma'am, wouldn't it make more sense to freight you and your dowry into Denver? Well, I'm afraid that's not possible. <laughs> you see, that beast, he left me with nothing, not even a farthing. Uh, but, you see... Uh, you wouldn't want me to be stranded out here 60 miles from nowhere, would you? Oh. I guess we wouldn't think of that, now, would we? Ah, oh, capital. Right, I'll go and pack, and then we can all be on our way. Now, one lost female, four breeding bulls, tin suit, 3,000 head of cattle. Yeah, that trail boss named Favor. the biggest breeding stock I ever did see. The herd took one look at him and busted loose all down the line. Yeah, well, what are you standing here for? Break out a rifle and cut him down. Well, I thought of that, too, but I was afraid I might hit Rowdy. Hit Rowdy? Well, Quince, too. You see, they brought the bulls in, them and the woman. Here they come. Yo, all of you. Get out there and get rid of those bulls. But Rowdy. No, he's mine. He's all mine. Oh, she... Oh, now, wait a minute, boss. Maybe you better have some coffee. It's good for the nerves. The only one thing's gonna help my nerves. Blood. Dundee, your bulls, ma'am. Macduff, whoa, that's far enough. And what do you knotheads think you were doing? Uh, well, you see, boss, it was this way. I send you out for strays, and you come back with four crazy bulls and a rolling junkyard. Junkyard? Dundee heirlooms junkyard? And just who do you think you are? You great oversized, beady-eyed cross between uh, a... Hey, that's the boss. <sighs> oh, Mr. Favor, of course. Oh, how charming. Well, you see, Mr. Yates and uh, Mr. Quincy, they were just telling me what a wonderful gentleman you are and a great inspirational leader. What are you waiting for? Get those bulls out of here. Well, that won't really be necessary, boss. You well, see, uh... those bulls are trained, boss. They mind her, uh, don't they, ma'am? Oh, certainly. If you want the animals removed, Mr. Favor, all you have to do is to ask him. Monrus, move over there. Then he's McDuff. Get along with you. See? All right, Joe. Just make sure they keep moving. Don't get too close to them. They're not used to you yet. Yet? Yeah, see, that's what I was going to tell you, boss. You see, Miss Dundee here. Well, Oh, what he's trying to tell you, Mr. Favor, is that these two gallant gentlemen of yours, in the true tradition of the great American West, have offered to a lost, maltreated woman the sanctuary of your cattle drive. They did what? Uh, well, she was down to her last cup of tea. Well, we just couldn't leave her out there alone and lost. You expect me to take four bulls and this? Kathleen Dundee, Aberdeen, Scotland. On my cattle drive? Well, she had no place to go, boss. She had no money, not even a farthing. Just four big bulls. Oh, I assure you, Monmouth and McDuff and Dunheath and Canoosty, oh, there'll be no trouble at all, none whatsoever. And, uh, well, I could be very useful to you. And I promise to stay well out of the way. Mr. Favor, I've been lost a long time. I'm alone in a strange land, and all I want to do is to get back to Aberdeen where my bulls and my junkyard and I belong. Please, Mr. Favor. Uh, Mr. Favor, I could use some more help around Chuck Wagon. Me too. And uh, I'll put the bulls on drag, boss. That way the herd won't even see him. Well, the boys would be glad to pull double shifts to help out. She was jilted. She uh, hasn't got anyone else to turn to, really. All right, all right. I can't stand to see grown men cry. 
Stay with us until we hit the next town. Mr. Faber, I the don't... The next town. Just as you say. And I'm extremely grateful. Help! Somebody do something! <laughs> can't understand it. It's that scarf, Joe. Carnoustie there just don't like Yeller. Oh, must be something more than that. I've never heard him so unruly. Must be the prairie nuts. Prairie nuts? Blemishes of a minor sort. He gets them constantly on his back. You wouldn't by any chance mean warble flies. Well, I don't know what you call them. Blemishes in Scotland are called something else, but I'm sure that you'll know what to do with them. I'm uh, Mr. Favor. Do start shaving, because your lather's going hard. You must be uh, Mr. Wishbone and Mr. Mushy. Well, Wishbone, how quaint. You know, you, you resemble a cousin of mine. His star was Haggis, a bit of a gourmet, as I recall. Also, I think he dabbled in medicine. <laughs> well, <laughs> I guess I better get back to the herd. Hell, me too. Yeah, I better get this wagon. Miss Yates! Have you ever seen a herd down with warble flies? Gee, no, I can't say that I have. And you wouldn't want to see anything messy like that either, would you? You mean? That's right. You're going to get the chance to dip Carnoustie and all his little friends. All right? All right. I don't mind dipping bowls. I thought so. Carnoustie needs a bath. That's all right, man. Oh, do, do be careful, Mr. Yates. Keep your dip out of his eyes. Yeah, I'm trying my best not to. <laughs> It's got to be done. It's the only way to get rid of the warble flies. Are you all right? Oh, I'm fine, yes. Oh, it's a fumes. <coughs> Mostly sulfur and aspid. It's worse than rotten eggs. You sure you don't want to go back to camp? No, I'm fine. <laughs> It's past your bedtime. Settling down any? Afraid not, boss. It's them bulls. They ain't doing nothing but just... Yeah, I know. Carnoustie and his friends. All right, keep them tight. I'll put some more men on those bulls to make sure they stay on their side of the fence. Quiet down, you old moss box. You ain't going nowhere. Such an idyllic pastoral scene, but I was under the impression you were going to spend a bit of time with them nice little bulls tonight. Oh, yeah. Well, you see, it was that um, warble fly dip, boss. I couldn't stand myself afterwards. Elixir of rose blossom petals and honeysuckle buds. Cool. 
Yeah, well, <laughs> that's Miss Dundee's. It's the only thing I could find that was strong enough. Boy, are those bulls gonna love you tonight. And all night long, too. Dundee, I'm just getting warmed up. There you are, Mr. Faber. We were wondering where you'd got to. Oh, I'd bet on that. Oh, so the Englishman was right. Truly a man who hath no music in himself. He's fit for treachery, stratagems, and spoils. Why, these men of yours, they dance so well, they must have a drop or two of Scott's blood in them. <laughs> or a drop or two of the Orkney special. <laughs> Oh, it's just telling the truth, boss. I just couldn't resist it. And guess what, Mr. Faber? Miss Dundee, she thinks we're related. My middle name's Milligan and her great uncle. Angus Milligan, regimental commander, the Queen's own volunteer guard. That is, uh, before he immigrated to America. Ah, oh, the poor dear. We never have heard of him since. Mr. Mushgrove here. He could be his twin. Yeah. Uh, she showed us a picture. His spitting image. But we thought it was only proper to unpack Uncle Angus's regimentals. Ah, doesn't he cut a bunny figure? Crafty would be more like it. All right, Munchie, let's get out of that fool outfit and get behind the self-respecting apron where you belong. Yes, sir. Fool outfit? Quince, if that pile of junk don't disappear in five minutes, you're going to be riding Nighthawk in it all evening. Pile of scrap? Just a favor. Now, maybe you haven't noticed it, but this is a cattle drive and not a traveling carnival. But... So, while we're enjoying the benefit of your company, you will confine yourself to the chuck wagon. And please, let's keep this claptrap where it belongs, huh? Claptrap, indeed. For your information, Mr. Faber, that claptrap, as you call it, represents a 400-year heritage of proud life and noble death, honored on the battlefields of Europe, to the Baskerville Moors, to the great stones of St. James himself. A heritage that was flourishing when your ancestors thought treetops were homes. <laughs> Claptrap indeed, Mr. Faber. Huh. Well, that dinner gonna jump into the pot all by itself? For your information, Mr. Trail Boss, that dinner's all done and just simmering while Miss Dundee's pies is getting done. Pies, which I might add, she's made special for you and the men. <laughs> I think I got this all wrong. Maybe uh, you should be riding the night guard and I should be back with the pots and pans. Hardly, Mr. Yates. You see, Macduff and I were practically brought up together. There's no need to watch over them. All they need do to settle is a good night from me. Well, I'm afraid Mr. Favor doesn't agree. He says watch him, so we watch him. Insurance, you might say, to be on the safe side. Your Mr. Favor is a stern taskmaster, isn't he? Well, driving the men is the biggest part of driving cattle, I'm afraid. Yes, I suppose so. 
you wouldn't consider me part of the cattle drive, would you? Uh, well, if you were, I'm afraid we'd have more drovers than we do steers. <laughs> then you will help? How? Well, help me to change Mr. Favor's mind. Well, he can't just drop me at the next town. That's playing right into his hands. Whose hands? Mr. White in the man I was supposed to marry. Oh, he'd do anything to get my bulls back. He's probably notified every constable in the territory to arrest me on sight. Now look, Kathleen, the law works both ways. Now, all you have to do is... There's nothing I can do. That's what I keep telling you. I'm not even a citizen. The law's all on his side. Please speak to Mr. Favor. He'll listen to you. All I want to do is to get back to Denver. Then I can sell Dunheath, or oh, to a good family, of course, and then secure my passage to Aberdeen. Please, Mr. Yates, if you don't, I'll never get home. Yeah, but look... Oh, I'm only a woman. All I can do is beg. Well, I'll see what I can do. Oh, Mr. Yates, I'll be eternally grateful. Can I believe this? Believe what? I never thought I'd see the day that the bulls could drive cattle better than we could. Look. Hey, how did just having them back there? Seems to make the steers a little nervous. Pushes their speed up. If we keep the bulls around at this rate, we'll be in Denver a month early. You can uh, keep that bull. See you in Denver. Old Carnoustie there, he's gone plumb goofy. Got the whole tail end of that herd running around the circle. Carnoustie, huh?
That old boy just started running like he's mad at somebody. At somebody, Scarlet. Something. Look, boss. Daisies. Yellow daisies. Uh, oh, tell me. I bet I know. Carnoustie don't like yellow, huh? Well, yeah. Yeah. Well, what was you saying about how helpful Bulls is on a cattle drive? Well, uh, you see... And that, uh, and that little girl that talks to them and keeps them real nice and quiet. Now, where do you suppose she's got to, huh? Oh, well, maybe she got lost. I guess. Now, that would be a shame, wouldn't it? Well, boss, now... Find her, Mr. Yates. You find her on her wagon and her bulls, and you lump them all together. That way, you shouldn't have any trouble when you leave. Leave? That's right. You're leaving in the morning. You and Mr. Quince and all of Aberdeen, Scotland, and Macduff and Dunheath and Monmouth and Carnoustie are going to disappear. Just like that, you're all going to disappear. Where are we going to take her? Back where you found her, anywhere. I don't care just so long as you keep her away from this herd. Is that clear? Well, yeah, it's clear. Fine. Uh, maybe we could get in a little cattle driving now, huh? All right? What was that? Yeah. You did say Miss Dundee. No, that was Mr. Yates, and I didn't bother to correct him. Didn't bother? For your information, Mr. Wishbone, I've left my husband. I had the hoax of a marriage declared a null and void. Well, are you also going to declare that baby null and void? Lady, there isn't a doctor around here in 50 miles. My baby isn't expecting it, and I believe I can still count. Well, maybe you can, but the baby can't. There's really nothing to worry about, Mr. Wishbone. Oh, that's fine for you to say. But what about me? I helped deliver a few calves into this world, but if you think I... Yeah. Oh. You just push, and I'll tug. We Dundee's a sturdy stock. We carry our children well. My mother was harrowing Clover to the last hour, and I was born en route to the barn. Barn? Well, all we got's wagons. <laughs> well, if necessary, that'll do fine. Well, nothing's gonna do fine when Roddy and Mr. Favor find out about this. Mr. Wishbone, that's exactly why I've been trying to conceal the truth. 
the immortal conspiracy of mankind, superior beings, honor bound to present a solid unwavering front to the weaker sex, no matter who's right or who's wrong. Tell them that I dare to defy the nuptial fetters of felicitude forever. To a fellow man, and your Mr. Favor and Mr. Yates will have me dropped at the nearest doctor's doorstep as if I were a blight on society. And leave me to the mercy of that gruesome monster I once called a husband. Well, monster or no monster, you still ought to be in doctor's care. You wouldn't even be out here if you wasn't ailing. It's a minor circuitly condition. Common in pregnancy, and the cool waters take the swelling of the ankle down. There's nothing to worry about. Well, I still got to tell them. Mr. Wishbone, you do that and you'll be committing murder. If that husband of mine gets me in his clutches, my spirit will die. And that means I'll die, too. Please, Mr. Wishbone, don't tell me. But... I promise that at the first signs, I'll tell them myself. And then you can go out and scare up 50 doctors if it'll make you feel any better. Fair enough. Well, fair or not, they're still gonna find out. Motherhood has a way of getting around on a cattle drive. When Mr. Favor finds out, I know what he's gonna say. <laughs> what the doctor ordered. Oh, but Mr. Wishbone. Yeah, no buts about it. There's an extract of iron and calcium and phosphorus in there, just the thing for blood and bones. Now, either you take it or I'll talk. Oh, man. I know just how you feel, but there's more important things than getting to Denver. And whatever you think of Mr. Favor, he's doing the right thing. You got no business at all out here, you being in a family way and all. Mr. Wishbone, my Uncle McIntosh marched 1,000 feverish highlanders over the Kyber Pass in the dead of winter with nothing more to keep him going than his bagpipe and three kegs of Aberdeen ale. A Dundee never surrenders and never retreats. I'll get to Denver if I crawl there on my hands and knees I'll get there. And my blood and bones are fine, thank you. This will be real good for the men. the coffee. There's nothing wrong with a little calcium and phosphorus. Matter of fact, there's some around here I know could use a little iron, a little less lead. Trail boss around? Yeah, looking at what's left of him, your favor. Oh. Lost my horse a few miles back. Saw your herd. Figured I might deal with it for another animal. To me, like you could use something solid behind your belt more than a horse. See what I can rustle up. Wise. You uh, usually do your traveling at night, Mr. Uh, uh Whiting. Richard Whiting. And as to when I do my traveling. Yeah, it's only jerky, but it's filling. Oh, thank you. Don't look like I got much choice, seeing as how I'm trying to follow a trail that wanders over half the territory. Might be you can help. Wrong, Mr. Whiting. You mean you were looking for someone. Well, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Trying to steal a woman's dowry. Hold it, hold it. What's this all about? Him. The man who jilted Miss Dundee. She told you that? That and more, you thief. Who? I haven't got warmed up yet. What right have you to leave me? What right? Well, look, if this is a private argument, why don't you take it someplace private? 
You run off and leave me. Leave you? To go traipsing around half the territory in a wagon my old man wore out 30 years ago with nothing but four half-wild bulls. Half-wild? To keep you company, no food, no money, and you ask me what right I had to follow you? Mr. Whiting, when you abandoned me, you also abandoned all the rights and claims to anything that existed before the fact. I abandoned you. All right, fella, you oh, bet just a minute, model. Roddy, they're married. Married? Oh, no, we're not. I told all the neighbors he was null and void before I left. I don't care what you told the neighbors. You're going home if I have to drag you by the hair. Oh, no, I'm not. Never. Mr. Faber, you're a reasonable man. No, yeah, true. This man married me under false pretenses. Once he'd got me and my bulls in his power, he put Canoosty and Macduff to service ordinary range cows. And for what? So he could buy more range cows for Monmouth and Dunheath. And as if that wasn't enough, he used my great Irish grandmother's porcelain night pot as a spittoon. I didn't know it was no antique. And then he dared to cart my dowdy, my precious heirlooms, every one of them out to his barn. Hmm. I'm likely to make nests for rodents. I still say a thing ain't got no use, you junk it. And finally, having shredded me of all my pride and reducing me to the status of a chambermaid, he finally took the humiliating step. He deliberately stole my dot, my grandmother's thriftily preserved 92 pounds sterling, and he abandoned me. Now I ask you, Mr. Faber, what would you do? Well, now, I... Oh, that's it. That's exactly what I did. Run. And run and run and run till I was far away from his designing and deceitful lies. Kathleen, I did not abandon you. I went to San Antone to buy a decent strain of Herefords to breed with your Aberdeen bulls. And as for your grandmother's dot, I put it in a bank where it belongs. Lies, lies, lies. Oh, you don't fool me. And you don't fool any of my friends either. All right, that's enough. No more talk, no more cock and bull stories. You're going home, and I mean right now. Don't forget to take your bulls with you. Oh, no, I'm not. Never over my dead body. I may not be able to swing right, but there's nothing wrong with my aim. Liberty in every blow. Come on, let's do it. Oh! 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 Miss Dundee, I mean, Mrs. Whiting, is it? Mr. Wishbone, I don't think we're going to have time to scare off those 50 doctors. Kathy. It's all right, mister. You're just going to be a daddy. A baby? Yeah. Mushy! Blankets! And I think hot water. Happening? Not yet. Well, isn't there something that I don't worry? You'll know. Uh, here, you look like you need this. But I need you. You ain't got women. Oh, I know how you feel. Yeah, me too. Look at it. Must be at least a ton of it. Junk. And I helped cart it all the way from Scotland. And them bulls. Like they was part of the family. Family? Say, hey, Whiting, you know, you may be right. Maybe they are family. And to a woman, everything she owns is part of her family. And this junk's got family written all over it, doesn't it? Oh, yeah, sure. <clears throat> Especially this here bathtub. Now, now I know... Uh, Females sort of hard to understand at times, especially with things like dowries. But you got to be calm and sensible about it, like me. You got to look to the other side of it. Now stop and think about it, Whiting. All this junk, I mean, all these priceless family heirlooms here, they represent 400 years of living. The heritage of a family that was making history before Lewis and Clark ever realized there was unmapped territory west of the Mississippi. Now, of course, I know it doesn't mean much to you or me, but to a woman. Well, I gotta admit, I ain't never quite looked at it that way. Yeah, that's right, Whiting. You just haven't been thinking of it right. Well, uh, <laughs> just think of it. You're liable to be the only man this whole territory has his own personal iron suit. 
Yeah, yeah, Rowdy. Oh, of course, uh, well, it'd take a lot of doing to meet her halfway. It'd take an awfully big man to pull that off. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't know. What's in this? Boiled rocks? Oh, that's uh, just a little uh, calcium and, and phosphorus. It's the best thing in the world for a new father. Is he still there? If he don't quit pacing out there, he's gonna dig a trench right through our camp. But it's all an act. He doesn't care, not really. I don't know, he seemed like a reasonable enough man. Reasonable? After what? Oh! Uh, oh no. I'll take your word for it. Now, you just save your strength, you're gonna need it. Well, I still say he doesn't care. Well, any man that's done as much trailing as he has, has to care some. When he first come in here, he looked like he was shopping for a pine box. He did look a bit starchy, didn't he? Well, he's gonna look a lot worse before he looks any better, unless you do something about it. What can I do? You can meet him halfway, that's what. But yes, but I... Oh, Mr. Wishbone. Oh. It's all right, I'm here. Just keep talking, just keep talking. Hush, my baby, oh, street up. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Oh. See your family. Harkness, I think that I will have a cup of coffee. Yes, sir. You, uh, you sure you're all right? Yes, of course I'm all right. You asked me that three times. Yes. Look at your son. <laughs> Look at that. I think Macbeth's a nice name. Don't you agree? <laughs> well, we better get started. Get started? But you just had a... Hitch up the team. You don't think I'm going home without my dowry, do you? I get to round up them strays, I guess. No, no. You two are going on drag to stay. The only way I can make sure the right strays come back is to do it myself. Crockery. That's decent of you. But if you think you're gonna spread that crazy pewter around my office, you got yourself another thing coming. Mr. Whiting, the pewter is not crazy. And it goes with that dungeon that you call an office. And it's for that fool bag of wind, or whatever you call it. Bag of wind. Bag of pipe. Whatever it is, you play it down in the South Meadow where my ears can stand it. Or so help me, I'll burn the fool thing. So much as touch it. And my great-grandfather's battle axe and he's got it again. Moving, 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 go there, 
disapproving. Keep them. 